Morning Drive, presented by Sumner One. Guess what day it is. It's Friday, Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend, weekend Friday. Good. Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday from the opening drive on 101 ESPN with Brooke Grimsley and Super Bowl champ Kerry Davis. I'm Randy Carricker, and it is great to have you with us on a Friday morning at the end of a three-day work week. We need these on a regular basis. This is this is something that I think we need to advocate for. This is a, this is a platform for somebody to run on is the, the three-day work week. Randy, they would have my vote. I, I don't care about any other policies. I, whatever you choose to do, three-day work week, yeah. you can write my name down as one. One. I cast my yep. vote. I'm one. Doesn't matter what else yes. you're saying. Really? Yes. Not really. I, I love working. I, I will work as much as possible. <laughs> Tommy and John, if you're listening, I, I love it. I'm going to work seven days a week. I, I love it too. Seven. Not yeah, 24 seven. Yeah, no. That's good because you got two, three day work week guys go. here. Then, yeah. You can have the rest. Hey, but I know the way you want to work seven days a week, Brooke. It's because. The Cardinals win. The Cardinals are coming. How about our red birds? They're rolling now. That's one. That's one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a one. slow startup. Well, they they won a game. They won a game. One out of one out of four. They didn't well, get swept. The, they, Downers. They did not. Then that's a positive. Go win three in Chicago. Oh, no, come on now, uh, Randy. I, I, I honestly, so you know, I, I am a oh, true Cardinals fan. I, I love are. the St. Louis Cardinals, and so when they won that game. I was just like, eh, okay. <laughs> you know what? I was that way the night before, too. I really was. I, w- I was that way last night, and, and I was that way the night before when Hicks threw the ball away. <laughs> okay. Aren't you kind of used to more dramatics at this yeah, point? Yeah, was, uh, I was expecting some. The thing that's frustrating for me is that was a really good win yesterday. They they did a lot of things. They had a hit and run and scored a run. They had a home run uh, by Arenado. It, it, there were a lot of good things that happened. Jordan Walker made a heck of a play sliding and stopping the ball yeah. and getting the ball in the infield so that the runner couldn't score. Those are the things that good baseball teams do, and I'm so frustrated because I know it's in there. It's like when you're a coach, you know a guy has all of the potential to do all of the things. Un- he can do everything, but you just can't get it out of him. That's the most frustrating position to be in as a coach, and that's what I feel with this Cardinals team. They have so much potential. Mm-hmm. I just can't get it out every right. single day. Don't yeah. give me a piece. Give me. I want the whole thing. One of those guys is Jack Flaherty. He was brilliant for five innings, and then in the top of the sixth, he got some support from his third baseman. The 2-1 pitch. Driven towards center. Myers on his horse. Still going, still going. It's an opposite field homer for Arenado. He got ahead in the count, and he gulfs one out to right center. And the Cardinals break through in the sixth. It's one to nothing. Chip Carey, who will join us later in the show with the call on Valley Sports. Cardinals scored another in the seventh, another in the eighth. A 3 nothing lead in support of Flannerty, who went six and two-thirds. He allowed nine hits, walked a couple, and struck out five. Got a 562 opening inning ERA. But there's a good way to start. He strikes out Soler on a slow breaking ball. You can go out there and pitch your game. Swing and a miss. The ball scoots into center field, but Segura didn't see that. Dane Myers strikes out for the second out of the inning. It's second strikeout for Jack. No balls, two strikes. Runner at second, two outs. Right down Broadway. Jack Flaherty continues his dazzling work. High fly center. Carlson on the run. Still going at the edge of the track. The park big enough to hold that. And Flaherty strands three more Marlins in the fifth inning. Pitch 82 for the Cardinals right-hander. Here it is. And he struck him out. 94 down and in. Nothing Cooper could do about that. One away. And I loved the fact, because I've been whining about it for the entire season. I whined about it a couple of nights before. They allowed Flaherty throw, to throw 111 pitches, gave him the chance to go seven innings. And that's all I can ask for is give them the chance. I don't think they do it enough with Montgomery. I was glad to see that they allowed Flaherty to 
try to get the seven innings in. It didn't work out that way, but at least they allowed him to try. Because I do think at that particular stage, with his last hitter, that he was still the best pitcher the Cardinals had available to them. I really like that moment by Ali Marmol to come out. You have that quick conversation. And, of course, as you mentioned, it, it didn't exactly pan out as planned. But showing your kind of trust and conversation with the pitcher is exactly what we have been asking for. And that was a huge moment, I felt like, for Flaherty and Ali Marmol and for the rest of the pitching staff to see. It was, it was important, and, and I loved it as well. It was just, you know, he was right at 100 pitches and, got an opportunity to go get the final guy out. Unfortunately, he didn't. I also loved, I don't know if you all saw this, when, I forget who he walked, but he kind of shouted in, in, in excitement, and Wilson looked at him like, stop. Yeah, yeah. Don't do that. Like, this is, and, and so for me, again, Wilson Contreras is the guy that's going to step up and stop all of the nonsense, but the fact that Ali was willing to go give him that opportunity to get the last batter, it showed confidence in Jack, it showed confidence in the team, and it probably it felt to me like one of those moments that the, the, the sheet, the analytic sheet said, take him out of the mm -hmm. game. Yep. And Ali said, you know what? The hell with that. I'm going to go with my guy and give him one more chance. And it didn't bite you in the butt. So it, it ended up working out yeah. for you all. De La Cruz walks. Stratton comes in. Good work by Stratton. Yes. And then the Cardinal bullpen came through and the Cardinals achieved the shutout, which is, it's all good. Everything about last night was good. The only problem was that uh, it was the fourth game of a four-game series and you'd lost the first three. That's, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't remind us of but that. But now the Randy. Cardinals get to take on the White Sox and uh, they're, they're in Chicago before the All-Star break. That's not a bad thing. It's a, this, this will be a fun weekend. Do you guys start looking at these games now? Of course, you're happy about one win, which I was very mm -hmm. excited. My birthday wish coming true. Yeah. That was nice. Yep. Somebody texted that in. I said it needs to be my birthday every day, I guess, yeah, moving right. forward for the Cardinals. <laughs> if we just need to celebrate to help them push through, let that be the catalyst Thing moving is, forward. Brooke, if you have a birthday every day, you get old in a hurry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, it, maybe I have to sacrifice myself for the Cardinals to turn around this season. But do you guys start watching games now where you're like, ooh, that person's trade value just went up? I do. Yep. Unfortunately. Jack, yep. Jack Flaherty last night. That, yeah. Absolutely. And the other thing is, with this particular ball club, and uh, according to Derek Gould, they're going to call up infielder Jose Fermin over the course of this weekend. Trade deadline and 2024. Okay, so how does that guy fit in for me as I try to build this team for 2024? Because here's what's going to happen. And, this, uh, and I hope the Cardinals don't get fooled by this. A lot of bad teams get good in the second half of the season, and they really aren't that good. Don't believe what you see. What you, you've seen for the first 105 games, that's the Cardinals. All right? Don't believe what you're going to see after this because they're playing loose. They're playing free. They really have nothing to play for. They have no idea what it's like to play in September. This group... You mentioned Contreras. He's the only guy that's really that's with the team right now that has played with real true championship aspirations. I don't think Goldie and Arenado have. They played with playoff aspirations, but not championship aspirations. And the Cardinals need more guys that understand what it takes to win in September and October. And that is way beyond analytics. That's where the stomach comes in. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to have a stomach to play when you're out of the race. Oh, no. I mean, you just show up every day and take care of your business. Yeah. Win, lose, or draw. Yeah. At that point, it doesn't matter. But when, when it's on the line, when there's something on the line and it really matters, that's when you really know the, the, the will of a man and how well they're going to perform in those situations. I think Goldie and Arenado have it in them. They just haven't had the opportunity presented. I, I agree so, with that. So, you know, you got to, at some point, hopefully they do get there. I, I don't know that it'll be this year, but uh, if it is, it'll be a shock to everyone, especially it's everyone not in this, this room. It's, oh, okay. it, this is over. By the way, the I, Reds I to keep win again last night. And one of the pro problems the Cardinals have, aside from being bad, uh, and, and being four games out of fourth place in their division. They're 12 and a half games behind the Reds, but you just don't have enough games to to catch up now. You've played 50, 60, 70, 87 games, so 92, 102, so you've got, uh, what, 77 games left. You just don't have enough games to make up 12 and a half. You just no, don't. No, and, and you have these glimpses that we keep seeing, but it feels like we're way past that point of showing any hope for that second half of the season that says this group has figured this part of their game out where you feel comfortable moving forward. That was a game where it was fantastic by Flaherty and what he was able to do. You had the offense show up. You had Nolan Arnato, who's kind of breaking through right now, especially in his last 10 games. But it still feels like 
there is stuff that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. There's not something that you can hang your hat on and say, this is enough to push them through, not just for the second half of the season, but a possible playoff run. There, there's nothing there yet that you're seeing. Yep. Meanwhile, is there anything better in America than a celebrity spat between the first pick in the NBA draft and Britney Spears? Oh. <laughs> I said that to <laughs> you guys last awesome. night. That's so intriguing. <laughs> oh. Britney has had a, 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 a history of some, a rough go. some things. Yeah. The thing that, that startled me most in that article is she said, I reached up and touched his shoulder. He's 7'3". Hey. She's 5 nothing. I, I don't know. I, I, that's a really, I mean... I don't know how long her arms are. I, I want to see how tall she is because she said she reached up and touched his shoulder. Yeah, let's check her out. I, I, I think I she's would need like to, five four or five, five two. I don't know that she can reach up and touch his shoulder. Which means uh, that she's got like a another like. And then she and just got three. she, she got, got a wingspan of a six yeah. seven person. Yep. And this is by the way, if you haven't heard, Victor Wembanyama, the first pick in the NBA draft <laughs> in Vegas. Are seven feet. Yeah, right. they're, they're they're in a restaurant in Vegas. He's walking in. His security team says, just look ahead. Don't turn around. Don't sign anything for anybody. Just keep moving. She, little Britney Spears, according to her, taps him on the back. According to him, grabs him by the back mm -hmm. somehow. And one of her, his security people just backhands her and knocks her glasses off. It's not great. So this is a Mark it's, not, it's not great for no. everybody. And, and for that to be your first, for Victor Wimanyama, oh, yeah. for that to be your first introduction into... Uh, American fame. Yeah. 5'4 uh, for Britney yeah. Spears. I don't Six, think four, she seven, can four. reach his shoulder. Seven, three. Uh, she's 7'3". She's wearing high, she's wearing extremely high heels in the okay, photo. Okay, still two so feet. There's, there's five, a photo. 5'7". He's 7'3". With three. heels? Was he wearing heels? He's, He's probably in flats. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think know that... You can reach his shoulder. Supposedly there's video and a lot of things around, but there are people who are kind of oh. more corroborating what Brittany said. I think either way, your security guard should not be... He shouldn't respond that way. That's, no. And that's, that's where true. you just need yeah. to handle it a little bit better. Yeah. yeah don't right? mess around with Brittany. I, I don't Isn't know. There Brittany, what's the Brittany fan club name? Isn't there a, a Britney Spears fan club? Come on, Brooke. You oh. should know this stuff. I have no idea. Hold on. The Brittany, Brittany Spears fandom? Hilton. Well, no. um, <laughs> I don't think that's. Uh, hold on, there. so there was a leave Britney alone. So you've got the uh, uh, be the beehive for Beyonce, right? Yes. Doesn't somebody else have like a whacked uh, out? Uh, Lady Gaga has little monsters. Little monsters, yeah. So I thought there was Taylor, a no, Taylor Swift has oh, Swifties. Swifties, there yeah, you they're, go. Yeah, they're they're, yeah, they're, they're out there. Intense. The but, beehive. Uh, yeah, the beehive, there. You leave Oof. those people alone. Yes. You do. Yeah, yeah, you get stung nuts. with the beehive. The army, what, Rihanna's army, ain't that what they call it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the clash I'll, we need yeah. to have. I'll then. roll with the army for the yeah. beehive any day. The I, army versus the beehive? You better leave the, eat both of them alone. Yeah, that's going to be. Don't talk about their leaders. It's a battle royale, man. You are this on is your own, WWE pal. stuff. <laughs> Writing credits, Gary. We are off and running. By the way, you can watch us on the old uh, YouTube machine now at 101 ESPN STL. Just fire up that YouTube on your computer, your phone, your device, and watch Brooke, Carrie, Matthew, Randy every morning from 7 to 10 here on 101 ESPN. Again, YouTube, our channel is 101 ESPN STL, and they tell me that it's a good thing if you subscribe to the 101 ESPN channel. I, I just heard that that's, that's a good thing. Coming up next on 101 ESPN, our buddy Greg Amsinger says that we should give John Mozeliak and the Cardinals front office a mulligan for this year. Should we, though? That's next on 101 ESPN. The MLB plays on ESPN. Tomorrow, it's Twins and Orioles. Pre-game gets underway at 1230. First pitch at 110. Your home for the MLB is 101 ESPN. Billy's on Broadway, St. Louis' newest sports bar. Billy'sonbroadway.com with live blues music several nights a week. Gain presents a tale of longing and long-lasting scent. Dear love of my life, we were on the 12B bus when I caught a whiff. A scent so fresh, so life-changing, I had to find its source. I didn't know if you were the woman in the pink freshly washed cardigan or the retired mailman next to me, but I knew one of you was my soulmate. Ah, the scent of Gain Flings. Add Gain Scent Beads for an even longer lasting scent. I'm Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I learned about atrial fibrillation the hard way. My symptoms would come and go. Shortness of breath, fatigue. I kept going. Then I got so lightheaded, I couldn't. My doctor said I have AFib, so I'm about five times more likely to have a stroke. 
Other symptoms, irregular heartbeat, heart racing, chest pain can come and go, but the risk of stroke stays. If you have symptoms, tell a doctor. Visit notimetowait.com. Sponsored by Bristol-Myers Squibb and Pfizer. Together Credit Union is the official banking partner of St. Louis City SC, and it's the only place to find the official City SC debit card, which comes with special perks like express entry, My City Plus membership, match day discounts, and more. How do you get the card? Open any personal checking account online at togethercu.org, or stop by any of the Together Credit Union's 14 local branches. There's no cost for the City SC debit card, so don't wait. Sign up today and show your pride for St. Louis City SC. Together Credit Union, helping you achieve your financial goals. Federally insured by NCUA. If you're a fan of wings but haven't been to Fenton Bar and Grill, what are you waiting for? As the home of the best trashed wings in St. Louis, Fenton Bar and Grill is also known for excellent entrees, homemade soups, delicious burgers, and much more. With ice cold drafts and buckets, catch great specials during games. Come visit the best servers and bartenders in town, and tons of TVs to catch every game. At Fenton Bar and Grill, you found the best place for lunch or dinner in St. Louis County. And be sure to try the signature golden sauce on those delicious wings at Fenton Bar and Grill. Men, are you suffering from erectile dysfunction or PE? The medical providers at Paramount Men's Medical Center offer breakthrough treatments that eliminate problems in the bedroom without pain or surgery. 98% of men see instant results on their first office visit. Listen to a specialist in men's health. I'm Dr. Simovitz. Paramount Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough medical treatments that eliminate ED and PE. Men are even lasting 90 minutes or longer, regardless of age or medical history. But that's not all. For a limited time only, call Paramount Men's Medical Center now and your initial consultation and first treatment are completely free. You'll see instant results right in the office. You'll even get a gift that enhances your performance in the bedroom. All this worth hundreds of dollars is free if you call now. 314-720-8210. 314-720-8210. That's 314-720-8210. Great legacies don't happen by chance. They're built with strategy, experienced guidance, and a vision for the future. Have you outgrown basic financial advice and are ready to start your legacy? Let's chat. PlanCorp, redefining wealth management through one simple value. Always do what's right for our clients. Complex financial planning for families and businesses right here in St. Louis since 1983. PlanCorp is your financial life advocate and now accepting new clients. Visit StartMyPlan.com to get started with a complimentary two-minute plan analysis. Don't miss incredible Macy's Black Friday in July specials while supplies last. Like 65% off stunning Effie Fine jewelry, 50 to 70% off designer suits, blazers, and pants for him, and select small appliances from Bella, Black & Decker, and more, now $30 and under. Or get an extra 25% off with your coupon or Macy's card. Download the Macy's app for even more great deals. Savings off sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. Donate your vehicle to Goodwill and get four filled box tickets to a Cardinals game this year. Goodwill accepts vehicles, running or not, and towing is free. Donating is quick and easy. Plus, you'll get a tax receipt. Visit MERSGoodwill.org for more information. Open up your 101 mobile app for your chance to win free tickets to Shinedown. Performing September 3rd at Hollywood Casino Amphitheater with special guest Papa Roach. Tickets for Shinedown are on sale now, but we've got your chance at winning free tickets for the show. Get entered to win now either at 101ESPN.com or on your 101 mobile app. Live from the Car Shield Studio, this is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Super Bowl champion Gary Davis. I'm Randy Carricker, and uh, it was another great season for the St. Louis Battlehawks here in St. Louis, their first full season. And the head coach, Anthony Becht, has some great things happening in town. As a matter of fact, there's an XFL showcase today here in St. Louis, and coach joins us now on the opening drive via the Celebrity Line on 101 ESPN. Anthony, always good to talk to you. Good morning. How are you doing? Uh, doing well, guys. Uh, it's great to be back in uh, St. Louis and uh, excited. Uh, to see some of these prospects. It's another year of showcases, and we finally brought one to St. Louis. So I know there's a lot of talent in this area that want to show 
uh, show their abilities, and we get to see a bunch of them today. How about an old fullback? Um, <laughs> well, I'll tell you, if he, if he washes out the gray beard there, I'll definitely let him talk to him back and show his stuff. I got a snap or two. Hey, down by the goal line, the short yard is back. I, I got you. Other than that, no I would not you. put it past you at all. There's no question. I, you're old school, man. You'll take that contact on. I, you're a dying breed, brother. Yes, sir. <laughs> Coach, so explain to us how the showcase is working with you're looking at local talent, and how has this worked out in the past? Yeah, so, you know, last year, remember, we were starting from zero, right? We had no players. So you're talking about, you know, close to 5,000 players over seven showcases. Uh, now it's a little different. The numbers are a little less. You know, now we paved the way as far as the XFL is concerned. Um, you know, we had the most players go to mini camps in the NFL. We had the most players signed. So we may have to do a little more work compared to other teams. But, you know, this is an opportunity to find those diamonds in the rough. I think that's the most important thing when you're talking about building a roster is, you know, being, you know, very studious about looking at every single player and, and saying, okay, listen, this guy may be legitimate regardless of the division, the school, or where he played. And, uh, you know, giving them an evaluation that's fair so that we can find the best players to add to our roster. Anthony, you talked about players getting signed from your team. You all went 7-3, and three, had a really good season. And with that, you know, players are going to be leaving. And one of those guys that got signed, Hakeem Butler, to the Pittsburgh Steelers, had a very good season last year. How excited are you for him and for all of your guys that have this opportunity at the next level? Well, you know, this is, this is part of the reason, part of the sell uh, from the XFL and really myself, you know, if they, these guys goals were to be in the NFL, uh, then this was the platform to do it. But at, at the end of the day, you know, these guys had to perform and, uh, they had to go out there and take advantage of it. And, you know, Hakeem Butler was a guy that wasn't on anybody's radar in an opening day versus San Antonio. You know, he lit it up and became a household name and a star just for St. Louis and the whole entire league. So, uh, just excited about him. And I hope all these guys do make it. Unfortunately, majority of my skill players got NFL contracts, so uh, we got to do some homework. But we are, you know, look, we, we drafted a few players that we feel like are very similar body types play-wise uh, than some of the guys that signed NFL contracts. So we know now our system. We know what we're looking for, and we're going to try to plug and play some of these new faces uh, so that these guys can step up and, and make names for themselves. Anthony, you mentioned Anthony Beck, head coach of the Battlehawks, with us on 101 ESPN, a showcase today at MOBAP, and Anthony will give us the times and the, the way to get out there. St. Louis obviously is the home of the ultimate example of a guy that just needed a chance, right, and Kurt Warner. You mentioned that there's a lot of players in the area. Uh, do you think there's a lot of players out there that aren't playing pro football that have the ability to play in the NFL? Well, you know, I, listen, I, I think all these players, when they, they come to our league uh, for those guys, it's about, you know, filling the missing piece, filling the holes in their game. You know, that could be mentally, could be physically, could be ability-wise, could be uh, the reps that maybe they haven't gotten. So, you know, I think they all have to prove themselves in a different way. And I think at the end, the NFL is looking for players that can perform at the highest level and when the chips are on the table. And I always told my players every single week, you know, if you win the championship, if you put a great season together as a team, those eyeballs will, will obviously be on you and everybody else, depending on, you know, how well we all played as a team. So, you know, I, I think that players are out there. They work hard. They want that chance. But, again, you guys know the numbers and the percentages. It's really low. And, you know, if we can refine some of these players every year and get, you know, 10, 12, 15 percent of our guys to get that opportunity again, then uh, I think that that's kind of the, what they're asking for from this opportunity. A lot of people wondering if A.J. McCarron was going to return for next season. I saw that he's in town for the showcase. So is that kind of a stamp of approval of showing that he will be back for next season? Well, you know, look, A.J. is obviously a, a unique uh, player as far as, you know, what he did for us. Uh, quarterback is extremely important. A.J. did a hell of a job, stepped in, was a great leader, and, and really took advantage – of the situation. I mean, for him not playing a lot of NFL games, you know, not being able to get on the field and for him to come out here and do did, did what he did for us, the league and, and our football team uh, was really impressive. Now you know, we'll see what lies for him as far as, Hey, is, is there an NFL team waiting in the wings? Is he a, a potential option uh, for somebody uh, moving forward as training camp and early in the season comes up because, you know, you know how things happen in the league with injuries and, 
and some of the top quarterbacks tend to go down. So, you know, we'll keep that in uh, in the realm of discussion. But, you know, we would love to have A.J. back. Uh, he's a great leader. I know he really loved what we did at the, uh, at the level here at the XFL. And, uh, again, he's with us today. He's out here. Uh, watching players and, and being around. So, again, someone that's engaging like that, not just during on the football field during the season, but also on some of this off-season stuff, coming back to the city. I mean, he's passionate about it. So those are the kind of players we're looking for. Uh, Anthony, how can people get involved today? Yeah, you know, I, I'm not sure if we're open to the public or not, but, hey, if they want to drive up, we're over at Missouri Baptist University. I'm sure they can stand out the fence and watch some of these guys go. But, uh, you know, we're getting ready to kick it off here at, um, I think, well, the players are checking in now, and I'm actually driving lost uh, as we speak <laughs> over in Missouri Baptist campus here trying to find a football field. But, uh, you know, they, they, they'll they be on the field about 8 o'clock to warm up. We'll give some opening remarks. And, uh, hey, if there's anybody in town and you want to swing by and, and, and say hello, uh, you know, we'll be out there. All right, good luck. Thanks very much for the time. We appreciate it, and we're always looking forward to the next Battlehawk season. Yeah, no doubt, guys. Thanks for having me, man. Have a great summer. All right, Anthony, you too. Anthony Beck, head coach of the Battlehawks here on 101 ESPN. Coming up, we're going to talk some golf with Jay Delsing. Sorry we didn't get to that segment about the Cardinals. We'll do that at the 8 o'clock hour here on 101 ESPN.
This is Rocky with your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Cardinals stave off the sweep by the Miami Marlins with a three to nothing win last night in Game Four of their series in Miami. Jack Flaherty with a gem, six and two thirds inning pitch, nine hits, zero earned runs, two walks, and five strikeouts. And Jordan Hicks back in the closer's role, needed just eight pitches to close out a clean ninth, one inning pitch, zero hits, and a strikeout. Cardinals back in action this time on the road in Chicago. It's a seven ten first pitch night. It's going to be the lefty Jordan Montgomery. Montgomery for the Cardinals facing off against the righty Dylan Cease for the White Sox. White Dylan Cease on the season three and three with a 4.10 ERA. That is your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff. Find your roads and shop 24/7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? Golfer on Golfer Attack on the Live Tour, and that's what we've got. And here to talk about it is our buddy Jay Delsing. You can hear Golf with Jay Delsing Sunday mornings here on 101 ESPN. Jay, good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing well, guys. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I, I, I love the fact that Brooks Kepka has attacked his live teammate, Matthew Wolf. Now, Brooks Kepka, by the way, famously said, the only time I play golf, you see me on TV. And then he said about Matthew Wolf, who's kind of given him like a half effort on uh, on Kepka's team on the live tour. He said, I mean, when you quit on your round, you give up and stuff like that. That's not competing. I'm not a big fan of it. You don't work hard. It's very tough. Kepka said of Matthew Wolf, I've basically given up on him. A lot of talent, but I mean, the talent's wasted. What do you think? Isn't it great? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, Brooks Kepka is just a walking, talking billboard for himself and for <laughs> drama and, <laughs> and uh, I, I mean right now we don't have enough drama in golf so we're going to have to add a little more <laughs> I, I don't know how you throw another you know the, the team concept is sketchy anyway right I mean does anybody can you name any uh, complete four man teams out there guys because I can't no I, I, but I can name the smashers that's a team yeah the Range Goats is one of my favorites. I'm like, okay, <laughs> Range Goat, whatever that is. Yeah, so obviously I don't love Liv. I don't love that. I think there's, there might be something fun team concept-wise. Tiger and Rory are doing this thing with different cities, and that's yet to be unveiled. I'm excited to, to, to hear about that because I think it's going to have a tiny bit more organization behind it. But the Smashers, the High Flyers, I mean, Phil Mickelson, stole the name from someone because now he's getting sued. The high flyers are getting sued for some sort of copyright infringement or some sort of trademark infringement or so. I don't know all of this court stuff, man. It sucks. <laughs> Jay, uh, I saw that there are six PGA Tour players, including last year's winner for the John Deere Classic, all staying in a house together. They did it last year. It worked out well for them. They're doing it again this year. Did you ever do anything like that during your time? Uh, we did a lot of that in college, Brooke. Um, we when 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 our team traveled, it was like a, a, was a like a really bad frat house with um, <laughs> all the different personalities. But we didn't do that much on the PGA Tour. You know, this is I'm aging myself completely here, but they didn't have any um, uh, Airbnbs and stuff like that back in the day, so we had no idea that those houses were even available to stay in. Um, so every once in a while. Um, a friend of mine and I, we would rent a house together, but it was just the two of us. It never was, uh, you know, that, that big of thing, but you know, it could really, it could really be fun, especially if there's some pool tables and, and some ping pong. I'm sure that there is so that the guys have stuff to, to do and play, uh, at, when they get back on the course. So, Jay, I'm reading an article from uh, Fox Sports, and it's a U.S. women's golfer disqualified after caddy makes grave mistake. Now, I'm not going to try to pronounce the golfer's name. I, well, I will try. Vong Tavilup? Her caddy was spotted during using a range finder. What do you make of that? Well, the range finders are – there's a confusing thing going on right now, Kerry, because they're, they're letting everybody use the range finders. Um, during practice rounds, and I think we were even allowed to use them in the PGA Championship this year. And you're allowed to use them in college, and, and, and so somehow or another, this guy didn't get the memo that the USGA is not on board with it. And I, I think it's kind of stupid. I really think that it, 
and might speed up play a little bit, which I'm all for. And I, I just think it's it's just so so much more convenient than trying to find the sprinkler heads and, and, and all the other thing. I think I just think it's it's too much. Now I talked to a few players about this and they were they were thinking they were not as in favor of it as I thought they would be because they thought that for certain guys it would slow them down. But Kerry, going back to the pronunciations, when we were with the Fox golf team, we were being pronunciation for three and four hours wow. before some of the women's events because there was this one woman from, from I think she was from Thailand, and I was like, please, God, just go let me be out with her. She had three Ks in her last name, and I <laughs> no chance of pronouncing it. Hey, uh, speaking, Jay, of uh... – of celebrity golf the american century championship is next week our buddy joe buck is participating he says by the way that we should root for him to be in the top 20 that's the goal is when we watch next week for joe to be in the top 20 but you played in the bob hope out in uh, california how much fun is it for pro golfers to get together with celebrities and see how good celebrities are and see how bad celebrities are because some of them think they're pretty good and they're really not yeah, that's more likely. That's more of a case than I can remember. I think I may have told you that I played with Lawrence Taylor back in his heyday, and that was scary. He was. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't that his golf game was so bad. His personality was frightening. He, we'd kind of get on the tee, and I'm like, this guy might get, he might just attack the crowd. He was so amped up. And, you know, we're walking around, and, and, and it's nothing like an NFL football game, clearly. <laughs> and he was not, was not comfortable. But for the most part, Randy, the, 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 the guys are really respectful, and, and it, goes, it goes really well. And you usually can make some, some good friends from, from those sort of um, rounds. Every once in a while, you'll get one with someone with, um, that just, just doesn't get it. You know, and and, and is in is, is is wants to hit a mulligan and wants to break a bunch of rules, and you just can't do that. But guys, I got paired with Tommy John, the Tommy John, <laughs> again, dating myself out at Pebble Beach. And as the round moved on, he um, and his partner, he was playing with uh, Lanny Watkins, and his, he and his partner were moving up the leaderboard. And I saw him this physical change in Tommy, and and he he had a hard time breathing. He was really really uptight he started missing a bunch of short putts and we went and had lunch afterwards and i said tommy you know he's like can you help me with what happened out there today i go well i watched it i said i i i guess you got to help me understand you're you're getting major league hitters out with 82 mile an hour you know that's all he had back in the day and 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 then i watched you you know have what happened to you today happened to you and he's like this is not my realm I got so nervous. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't feel my hands. I couldn't. And I mean, you'd think here's a guy that's pitching at Yankee stadium and and can, and you know, can't really throw over 85 miles an hour can, can trick the hitter. So it's, it's just putting these guys in, in these different situations. um, You guys that they're not familiar and comfortable with, and you see some pretty weird stuff. Is there a celebrity or an athlete that you really respect the game of a a non-pro golfer? Uh, you know, I, I don't like what he does to the NFL, but Aaron Rodgers looks like one of the best players, period. I mean, when he played in the, the second, I don't know how many, we've had so many matches, but when he when they played out in Montana, and I think it was just Phil and Bryson and, and Brady and, and Rodgers, I was really impressed with how, you know, when Bryson would wander off the beaten track, which happened quite often, Rodgers really... Uh, stayed in there and, and held him in there, and he he really putted well. And that's the thing, you guys, that, where you can really start telling it's because the putting is kind of the finer part of the game, and it's 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 super super hand eye that some of these guys aren't that great at. And Aaron Rodgers looked fantastic. Okay, give us one putting tip. What's one when you play with amateurs? What's one thing that people don't do well with putting that people could maybe use a, yeah. a tip for? Yes. So first of all, first of all, get your hands on the putter so that you're comfortable and your hands have to stay soft. And that means your forearms, everything has to be as soft and relaxed as you can. That's the most important thing. The neck from a, from a, a mechanical standpoint and Brooke, I understand you're, you're diving in head first to the game. Uh, yeah, that is, that is wonderful. So this, this might help. This might help you. 
Uh, otherwise, just call me. I'll, I'll t- teach you some new swear words because you're going to need them. If you're, if you're <laughs> the smarter. But, guys, the next thing that you want to do is when you're standing in your putting posture, you don't want to move much at all from your belt or from your waist down. And one of the problems that happens with most amateurs is they put a little bit of hip turn in with their putting as they come through. And every once in a while on a long putt, they'll crush one and it'll go 15 or 20 feet by the hole. And then from that point on, they're, they're going to be short the entire day because they're afraid of running that putt too far by the hole. That is when you, you get your lower body involved. So when you putt, you just want to kind of move your upper body together and let the, the head of the putter lead. And that is, that, that is the key. It, it is the key. We had Brad Faxon on, guys, oh, oh probably a month ago now. And he, 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 I think for the last 20 years of his, of his PGA Tour career, he never finished out of the top 15 or so in putting. And some of the stuff he told me, which is I'm, I'm relaying to you guys now, I went out and putted right away because I was like, damn, I haven't been doing that, that sort of stuff. So getting your hands on the putter and getting feeling comfortable with your hands on the putter, I know that sounds really stupid, but it is, it is really super important. Good stuff to work on. Jay, who do you have on the show on Sunday? Speaking of controversy, we have Brandel Chambly on the show. Love it. We talk, mm-hmm. Oh, I know. He is uh, not short on opinions and um, really a really well-educated guy. So we talk live and Phil and, oh, gosh, you know, all the, all the golf drama. We have golf drama now, which, you know. It's fun. I know. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Something to talk about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, have a great weekend. Thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it. We'll be tuned in on Sunday morning. Okay, guys. Have a great day. You too, Jay. Jay Delsing with us on 101 ESPN. Coming up, get your text in to the Air Comfort Service text line, 314-399-9646, 314-399-YOHO. We've got Take It or Leave It coming your way on 101 ESPN. With Brooke Grimsley, 
Kerry Davis, Matthew Rocchio, I'm Randy Carricker. Good to have you with us on the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Happy Friday, TGIF to you. Hope you have a great weekend and glad you're tuned in. And you can tune in on YouTube right now. Just go to YouTube.com and find our site, 101 ESPN STL. And when you get there, subscribe because we're on every day. Every show is on every single day on every local show is on the YouTube. So you're able to watch us now. And uh, we're having fun being on the on the YouTube. It's a beautiful I'm thing. going to smile at you right now on the YouTube. So there you <laughs> on go. The YouTubes. On the yeah. YouTube. Uh, on the YouTubes. Uh, kids, I asked. I have asked this question before, but I will ask it again. And this is based on your trust of Jack Flaherty in the future. Take it or leave it. You would sign Jack Flaherty to an extension. I am going to leave it because that also includes Jack Flaherty. Flaherty. wanting Old Flaherty, Irish. Yep. excuse me, Flaherty. that would also mean that he is wanting to stay. Mm -hmm. I think that especially after the performance, you look at his Yankees performance that he's had recently as well, his trade value is going to go up. There's going to be teams. We know that teams are kind of in desperation mode right now, and there's always going to be teams looking for starting pitchers. I think he's gone, and you might as well try to get some value out of him. <sighs> this might sound take it. crazy. You're going to take it that you'd sign him to an extension? I, I would. You try to, you would try, of course. Whether or not he does is obviously a different story. Yeah. Yeah, and by the way, he did have a, a 5.32 earned run average in June in four starts. Uh, we don't have to. We don't but he have hasn't to allowed a that. run yet in July. Here there we are. Go. He's two starts in July. Here's my thing. If you have a starting pitcher that is pitching great, and, and I know this sounds crazy, but you have a former uh, defending MVP, in this market, you're going to get more for Jack Flaherty because people are going to think that they're getting the 2019 Jack Flaherty. Flaherty is going to bring you a bigger haul than Paul Goldschmidt at this trade deadline. Oh, I'd leave that. No, nope, totally. It's all about I'd pitching, leave. man. Pitching, pitching, pitching. I think Paul and Goldschmidt would get you prospects, yeah. a lot of good yep. prospects. Jack Flaherty. You can get you if, if Flaherty doesn't allow a run in July at the trade deadline, he will be the younger he, he'll be the most sought after guy he'll be more sought after than lucas giolito he'll be more sought after than edwin rodriguez he'll be he you will be able to get a luis castillo hall for him uh we'll see what happens here in the next couple of weeks yep and and it's a big <laughs> if but teams w are seduced by players that by pitchers that have it going that have done it before and by the way castillo uh last year going from the reds to the mariners for uh among others edwin arroyo novel Marte, andrew moore and levi stout so the, the, i think those were the top four seattle prospects that cincinnati got in exchange for castillo we'll see so I, was, I don't know if you saw this a couple of weeks ago, well, last week, 76ers player Tobias Harris says the casual Sixer fan would trade him for a crumble cookie. Take it or leave it, Tobias has never had a crumble cookie. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take I'm, it. I'm going to take it. And He's I think the, most Sixers fans, it, with no disrespect intended towards Toby Harris, but uh, crumble cookies. That's what I'm saying. He's never had one. He <laughs> don't know how good those things are. <laughs> Much better than your 17, 18 points yeah. a game. He's yeah, absolutely right. right, though. He's not He's 100% right. right. Uh, crumble cookies are like the, the cookie awesome. of all cookies. Tobias Harris right now is like just above Nelson Aguilar for most Philadelphia fans. Mm. I'd take him on my side. I, I have a confession to make. <laughs> I haven't had a crumble cookie before. Oh. And, it's, and you guys know I love sweets. I just haven't, I don't know where to go. I, I know, okay. is there one nearby us? We're here until There's one 10. on Mid Rivers. Yep. Okay. We're, here, we're here until 10. Uh, we're in Creve Court at City Place. Somebody needs to bring. If you want to drop one off, <laughs> yeah. but listen, don't we had be. Cookies yesterday. Don't no. just drop one off. There's yeah, four of there's us four in of here. Us here yeah. <laughs> so yep. we had you know. cookies yesterday, CD. I'm trying to be good. Uh, okay, we'll bring I'm two. To slim down. They're bring so three. big. No, bring two. We can you cut it in half. Like what we did they, with the donuts. Huge. Yeah, they're, okay. yeah they're, they're huge. <laughs> okay, take it or leave it, guys. Michael McGreevy, I decided to do a little bit of checking on him last night, and he did pitch. Uh, six and two thirds, eight hits, gave up one earned run, uh, only one strikeout, but still, he tossed his fourth consecutive start, allowing just three runs or less. He did only strike out one hitter, but still uh, picked up 14 ground ground ball outs, and you know how much they like those. Oh, yeah. Take mm -hmm. it or leave it. We'll see him after the trade deadline. I'm going to take that. I think, once again, we need to look towards 2024. Montgomery and Flaherty will not be here. 
And so, yes, the Cardinals are going to need starting pitching. And rather than take another look at Dakota Hudson, we've been there, done that. Rather, rather than take another look at Matthew Libertor, it's going to be Zach Thompson and McGreevy. By the way, Steven Matz is going to start on Sunday. Let's see our guy. He's back. He's back in the starting rotation. Another shot at it. He's a bike rider. I like him. I want him to get a chance. I don't even care if he ever wins a game, as long well, as he rides no. his bike. No, 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 as no. As long as he no. rides his he's gotta bike. He's got to win. He's got to win. He does? <laughs> With this team? I mean, Randy, I, I keep saying, if you don't perform, you don't get paid. Yeah. That's just, I mean, he's going to get paid, but you don't get yeah. to keep playing. Draft hey, picks, that man. check's coming in either way. Yeah. Let the realism uh, just get a lot of bikes with you, that. Randy. Just let the realism happen. It yeah. feels good, doesn't it? This no. is a guy. So, Matthew Rock, and I are. So stay, stop. We, uh, we did. Adam Wainwright's big league impact. We did the the swing for impact, and Stephen Matz was in our our bay, and we loved the guy. And he he loves St. Louis. He loves to explore small yeah. towns around here. We were telling him about the Blue Owl and Kim's Wick, yeah. and going out and getting those giant pieces of cake and stuff. He said, and he's writing. He's putting all this stuff in his phone. Yeah, we told oh, him he's so this nice. Town, this town. Yeah, yeah, he likes to go hiking. To, uh, yeah, we told him biking. to go do the River Road up in Grafton and, and, yeah. and all that. Go you know right. fast days and all that. Yeah, and he's, he goes down and he loves Main Street, the old town uh, St. Charles. He's, he, he just, he loves this area. So if, if he loves St. Louis, I love him. Go, and he Randy. lives in Franklin, Tennessee during mm-hmm. the off season. So we chatted about that. Another positive. Yeah. There we go. Uh, what do you got on the old text line there? Take it or leave it. The Blues will not make the postseason next year because the number one priority isn't the playoffs. It's moving off these bad defenseman contracts. I believe that. Here's the thing. The Blues financial viability depends upon making the postseason. They take a massive hit, even if they don't make the first round. If you get a couple of first round home playoff games, that's a big deal for the St. Louis Blues. And they are not in a position and I I get where you're coming from financially with the the defenseman, but they are not in a position where they can be financially viable with the current construct of the league and the fact that they're a cap team. They can't be financially viable if they don't make the playoffs. If, if they go five years without making the playoffs, that'll be devastating for this franchise economically. Oh, 100%. They and can't be the Blackhawks. No, and I feel like they are making some of the moves towards showing that. I, I do think that you do want to see some things change defensively. Seems I don't know if that's Army. Is, he's just saying that he thinks that they will be able to turn it around, but it was just an off year. But it's hard to say that when it's like an off year for <laughs> an entire group. Well, that's why I fired the coach, though. Yeah, so you hope that maybe bringing a new coach, new eyes will help this group, and we'll see what unfolds with Tory Krug. And here's my thing, CD. Yes, they were all bad last year. But has Tory Krug performed well in the NHL before? Yes. Has Colton Franco yes. performed well in the NHL before? Yes. Has uh, Nick Letty? Yes. Has Justin Falk? Yes, they all have. Have any of them been a number one? No. But they've all performed better than they did last year. So who's the, who is who is the number one? Because we keep saying it should be Colton Pareko. It's, but it, 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 hasn't, it has to be. It Colton has Pareko. to be him, right? It has to yeah. be. They have to, yeah. they have to decide. It has to be a, a collective decision. Mm-hmm. We're going to play defense, and we're going to play hard, and we're going to play harder than our opponent. Get the puck out of our zone forwards get your back and help out and do your job as well and so when they make that decision hopefully mike weber has that and is able to instill that in them here's where i stand on this and colton Pareko may be the nicest person in the world and he is a really good hockey player but colton Pareko was considered a number one when he was with jay bowmeister joe jay bowmeister goes down oh we need to get a partner for Pareko, and it's uh, they they trade for marco scandela marco scandela doesn't work oh we need to get a partner for Pareko. it's tory krug tory krug doesn't work out oh we need to get a partner for uh Pareko. it's nick letty letty doesn't work out oh we need to get a partner for Tr- Pareko. and we're trying to trying to trade for travis sanheim at some point when you're they're trying to get you partners and you, they need a partner to get you to be good you're not a number one hmm. Yeah, the, I think the injuries have hampered him mm-hmm. a lot too. And he, he the back, thing is, it's right? hard to. Yeah, how long do you think he had that? No. About a week back. Yeah. No, 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 so. <laughs> no more back injuries. I cannot handle it anymore. That is my new birthday wish. I'm adding another birthday wish. It's for that to be done. But, so not loud, so we can't do it. Oh my gosh. But. I think injuries have hampered him over the years, but he did step up his ice time. It's about adding more of that physicality plus the extra ice time. Absolutely. Take it or leave it. The Cardinals sign one of Lucas Giolito or Aaron Nolan for agency. I'll take it. 
Actually, no, I'm going to leave it. Oh. My three number one wishes are either a trade for Cease yes. or Tyler Glass now. And I still think Tyler Glass now has a ton of ability yeah. or signing Nola. So I'm not going to put Le- Lucas. Giolito would be in my second tier, the second to three pitchers that I need after a number one. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to say G- maybe Giolito and Nola. Get out of here. Oh, that's that's expensive. That would be if they do that after like three off seasons of refusing to sign like one of the pitchers of that caliber, it just that would be insane. Not only that, Matthew, oh, but it. I'm also bringing in a pitching coach. God. Oh, how about can we just have Dylan fly back with us? Yes, Dylan Cease. Cease. Dylan Cease. That'd be good. Yeah. Just hop on the plane, buddy. I'm yeah. just I'm glad that you're starting to turn around on Dylan Cease. You were so against it. When I, I was never. No, I, I was. I didn't think that they would move him, but I think he yeah. might be available now. I think the the White Sox are stupider than uh, I thought they were. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Don't tell them that. Yeah. Which franchise has Luis Robert? <laughs> uh, take it or leave it. Nolan Arenado now regrets not opting out. I'm going to leave, leave that. it. I mean, how much is he making? How do you think he would like what playing with the way he has performed? How do you think he would like New York right now? Oh. I mean, it's, it's not much different. And the Dodgers were saving all their money for Otani. The Dodgers yeah. cut their payroll this year because they're make, they're going all in on Otani. They were not going to sign Nolan Arnato to a contract in excess of $35 million a year. And by the way, they've been burned. Freddie Freeman was a good sign, but they've only signed two guys for more than $100 million. Freddie Freeman was one of them. Trevor Bauer was the other. So the Dodgers weren't going after him. The Angels weren't going after him. They had uh, Anthony Rendon. Maybe the Mets go after him, even though their two best prospects were third baseman. But Arnado was better than them. How do you think he would like performing the way he's performed? How would he would he like being a Met right now? Nah. No. The Yankees weren't going to sign him. Red Sox weren't going to sign him. Cubs weren't going to sign him. So you opt out. Maybe you get less than thirty five million a year because all of that money goes. But if you opt out, your contract's over, and you don't get the whatever two hundred and forty million that was. I guess it was less than that because he played a couple of years of the deal. No, he doesn't. Number one, there's no pressure. Number two, he's getting his money. Yeah. And number three, he's at a place where he really likes it and his best friend is playing here. BFFs. Yep. Isn't that the goal? Yeah. Take it or leave it. He's being used as an opener in the second half gets Wayne to 200. Oh, I'll leave it because an opener doesn't usually go five innings. So I think what they're going to have to do is bring him back August and September and let him start games and get him to 200. And it, so he's got the month of July off to... Hopefully get the inflammation in the in the shoulder down and then come back for August and September and eight starts to get two wins. Hopefully what I, I, that was going to be my next question. What role? Because I if you want to get him wins, he's got to start. Does he? Yeah. I mean, you can bring him in. Yeah. Fifth but, inning. I, I wonder inning. if an official score, if you bring him in, try to game the system and bring him in to pitch the fourth and the fifth. I wonder if the, if, because if the official if the score has jurisdiction. If the situation fits. No. Well, yeah, the, the the official score can do that, right. but, he, but he can also give the win to somebody else. Right. I just I, I want to see I want to see him get those wins, and you know what? He'll he'll come back and hopefully be healthier. I'm rooting. For, we're all rooting for him. Uh, that is Matthew Rocchio. We thank you for your texts, and we do appreciate you participating in Take It or Leave It. Next up. We're going to get back to what Greg Amsinger said that we should. I I laughed. I I shouldn't have laughed as I said that, but you'll laugh when you hear it next on 101 ESPN.
Matthew and I were just talking about how hard it is to develop a short game in golf, but one of the things that you need to do is practice a lot. And many people, they go out to the range and they're hitting balls and they're using the driver and the irons, but they don't really get over to the green so that they can work on their short game. How about if you had a green in your backyard? You can get one from Celebrity Greens with Clubhouse Turf here in St. Louis. St. Louis is exclusive partner of Celebrity Greens, and what they're going to do is install an actual synthetic green in your backyard that putts true and gives you real Real grass performance so that not only can you practice putting, but you can practice those chips and pitches and bunker shots that give you so much trouble when you're out on the course. All of a sudden, you'll be a better golfer and your friends will be really impressed. Each clubhouse turf signature green is unique. Whether creating a replica hole like the 12th at Augusta or the 2nd at Belle Reve, clubhouse turf is going to create your own backyard golf experience that your family and friends will enjoy for years to come. Call them at 314-834-2343, 314-834-2343, or get your celebrity green from Clubhouse Turf here in St. Louis at clubhouseturf.com. What they want to hear is fire more mole, get rid of the entire coaching staff, Moselock's got to go, all the crazy talk that's on social media right now, simmer down. There's a reason why the Cardinal baseball is actually so successful it's boring because it doesn't overreact. It's not emotional. Cardinal baseball isn't emotional. So take the emotion out of this. Steady Eddie. Cardinal baseball is the tortoise. Let the Marlins be the hare. Let them have their moment right now. They'll be 30 games under 500 a year and a half from now. Don't worry about it. The Cardinals are going to get back on track. Are they going to be in the playoffs this year? Probably not. But just trust the process. And I know no one wants to hear that right now. That is not what fans in St. Louis think is smart baseball analysis. MLB Network's Greg Amsinger with us yesterday here on 101 ESPN. By the way, they've trusted the process in Philadelphia with the Sixers yeah. for many years. Hasn't worked that <laughs> Has great. Not worked out Here's well. my thing. And I, 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 there's nuance, and we have to understand that there, there is nuance in discussion. It's not all black and white. I can agree with Greg in saying, okay, you don't get rid of John Mozeliak, but I can also say that the Cardinals do need to have a fresh voice and fresh ideas because they haven't brought anybody in from another major league team that was a decision maker in this organization since 1996, 06, 16, 23. We're talking 27 years since the Cardinals have brought in Tony La Russa, who was a decision maker who came from another organization with other ideas. If you look at the top organizations in baseball right now, if you just look at the best records in all of Major League Baseball, and I've done this before, but I, I'll just uh, to 
give you an idea if you didn't hear. The the best records in baseball, Atlanta Braves brought in Alex Anthopoulos from the outside. He is their general manager. The Tampa Bay Rays brought in Kevin Cash to be their manager from the outside. The Baltimore Orioles brought in Mike Elias as their GM, Brandon Hyde as their manager. Texas Rangers brought in Chris Young and Bruce Bochy. My, Miami Marlins brought in, these are the top five records in baseball, Kimming and, and Skip Schumacher. Ideas with people from other organizations. So I do think the Cardinals need to do that. I know people hate John Mosaylock and do want him fired, but I, I don't necessarily think that's the only way to go. I do think, though, that this Cardinal organization, as bad as it is this year, is a lot closer than people give it credit for being to being a competitive team again. Well, and that's the expectation. That's the expectation is that they always will compete. It's just a very interesting conundrum, I guess is the is the word to use, that you're in right now where you do start to question the path that led to here. You look at the way the handlings of the Mike Schilt or even bringing in managers with no managerial experience, how that has panned out in these past few years. When you even talk about, you know, Mike Matheny, then you go with the handling of Mike Schild, and then you bring in Ali Marmol and the coaching staff surrounding him. But there's also other things to point to when you look at pitching develop, development and evaluating talent, where we're seeing these guys go to other teams across the league. And of course, if there's a couple times, there's always going to be things you lose out on, right? You're not going to come out on top in every perfect mm-hmm. situation. But when you see multiple times where you question, Question, did they actually evaluate this talent long enough and proper enough when you see them successful in an organization where they do develop them? And then you even look at yesterday, Matthew Libertor getting sent down. You start to question his development and how that has panned out. He's a guy that lit it up at AAA mm-hmm. this year, and now he's in the majors and he can't pitch anymore. So I think we can all agree there's a tremendous amount of ego in that front office, probably too inflated that needs to listen to somebody else and that's why i agree there needs to be more of a checks and balances system that's the problem when you when you don't i guess when you're not willing to listen to any other opinions or not willing to believe that that anyone else can have a right decision other than you and and i'm not i don't know if that's the case i don't know if there's a collective effort amongst them and they all come out to the same uh, uh, answer if that's the case you need you do you need to have other people in your organization that are willing to give you different answers and come up with different different opinions it, I think it's frustrating for Cardinals fans when you see Randy Rosarena doing well Adolis mm-hmm. Garcia doing well when you see these guys performing Sandy Alcantara doing well and and then you say well did we even give those guys enough of an opportunity to to pass or fail the test or did we just assume that they were going to fail despite not seeing enough of them and 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 that's the frustrating part when you're looking at players that leave this organization and go in other places but on the flip side, you know, they did hit with Goldie and Arenado. Those are, are players that were obviously well-established players, and they already had a, a credit, a history of doing the job successfully. The other guys that they gave away, you're not, you're not too frustrated about that. But when you just, when you don't hit on on a Matthew Libertor, and right now it doesn't look like it's going to be a hit. It's still kind of wait and see, and we've seen a lot so far that that we feel like it's not going to happen. Um, that's where the frustration starts to come in. Greg Amzinger on the manager situation in the dugout with the St. Louis Cardinals. I refuse to blame the coaching staff. It's, I, I want to say it again. It's not because I'm friends with Ali Marmol. It's because Ali Marmol has a job to do, and that's everything John Mozeliak and the front office wants him to do, and he's done it. This is a, a coaching staff that is in lockstep with the front office. Here you have full accountability, guys. This is the beauty of old school baseball management where you disagree with the manager. Hey, right? what, what the hell are you doing? Hit and running in the, in the eighth inning. You want the checks and balances between the front office and, and the manager in the dugout who's got his finger on the pulse of what's going on with the team. But you don't have checks and balances right now. You're managing from a spreadsheet that everyone in unison is in agreement that this is the best battle plan to win tonight's game. I like the fact that everyone's on the same page. But unfortunately, that page has incorrect information every single night. Mm -hmm. Let's look at it from this perspective, okay? You've got a group of 20 to 38-year-old men. And one day, you got a couple of bullpen guys. One comes in. And when a teammate comes out and uh, comes over to you as you're the manager, he says, hey, you know what? Uh, player X over there, we were out at the club last night. Man, he's not going to be good to go. <laughs> uh, 
And another guy comes in, and the coach says, he's he and his wife are not getting along. Yeah. The, the things are not good, okay? So does the spreadsheet know <laughs> about the guy that's arguing with his wife or the guy that was out at the club last night? No. He cannot. You, you, can, you have to manage people at yes. the end of the day. I, I thought it was interesting. Greg said hit and run in the eighth inning. You know what they did in the seventh inning? Hit and run. Hit and run. <laughs> Scored a run. Yeah. You know what they did and, and, and didn't stay, didn't stick to the script when they allowed Jack Flaherty to stay in the game, when he allowed Jack to stay in the game, an extra, bat, an, an extra batter to see if he can get him out. Those are the things that help you win games. Those are the things that help build confidence in a team. And, again, like you said, Randy, if you're sticking to the script 100%, you don't know the outside factors that are taking place with these players. And sometimes the script may say, take him out, and he may have something in him that says, no, I'm going to give him one more chance. Yeah. Ultimately, I can't give the franchise a mulligan for this year. This this year has been no. too bad. So there have to be changes, whether it is replacing or bringing somebody with a voice in that has fresh viewpoints. I don't think the Cardinals can go down the line with the, the same approach that they had in 2023. No, I, I can even point to exactly one, your pursuit of you're saying specifically a catcher and then you're bringing in Wilson Contreras and not putting the things in place to make sure that he is fully Mm -hmm. successful and then also pointing back to saying that you have six starters yeah and he did mo said that at his, his end of your press uh, conference he said, said he did uh, yeah like, they did have it, no, they yeah. didn't have it and and seeing that's once again something that is not panning out and you can even also say putting more trust into tyler o'neill i know that they did try to there's rumors that they tried to move him before the season started but a lot of those decisions you could say hindsight is twenty twenty. but when they all start to mount together it leads to what we're seeing this season it's not great no not at all and here's the thing it's it you can say that you've got five starters that's fine uh, but you know what it's the, the problem is is having five good starters well you thought you had starting pitching depth you, you thought you had outfield depth you thought that you had right. all this positional depth and how has that panned out well, and here's the thing um not great no. <laughs> there you go. If, if you are in john mosaic's shoes and you told the masses that you have six starters okay and Dakota Hudson hasn't been hurt. Jack Flaherty hasn't been hurt. Miles Michaelis hasn't been hurt. Steven Matz hasn't been hurt. Uh, who am I leaving out? Obviously, Wayno has. Uh, whoever. They, they, Did they you say Montgomery? Montgomery? Montgomery. So nobody's been hurt. So if you have talented guys and they've been healthy and they're pitching poorly, what's the problem? Okay, is it preparation? Is it your talent Pitching evaluation? Pitching philosophy. Philosophy. Something is wrong if you have the talent. If you told us you have the talent and the talent is healthy and pitching every day. So that means there must be a disconnect with the way the players are prepared to pitch. Or maybe they just didn't evaluate them correctly. That could be too. Yeah, maybe that, you it, thought. Are you going to admit that? <laughs> maybe you didn't evaluate. Yep. Maybe what you thought was six starters right. ended up being uh, two and impossible. We look at hand of spades. It, 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 see, it goes back to, well, we've got good players and they're tra- tra- they're coaches that say this. We got good, really talented players and they're trying hard. Well, that's kind of an indictment of you. <laughs> it's, not, it's not great. I also think too, when we've seen the offense just go completely cold. I, I read between the lines with some of the quotes. You you hear Jordan Walker when he returned, where he talked about he needed to just simplify his game and just mm-hmm. simplify everything. Dylan Carlson, remember even when him with him coming back, he said he had to simplify things and kind of tune some things out. What does that sound like to you guys? That there isn't a ton of respect for the coaching and the, the players don't appear to be on board with what is being taught to them. Does it? Well, if if what you're being taught goes completely against what you what, what got, got you there, here, yeah. Yeah. why in the hell am I going to listen right. to that? Yeah, uh, it, especially it, when you've been successful. If I've had success and all of the things that I did to get here allowed me to be here, I'm not going to change my game and shift it completely mm-hmm. to something that is not having me allowing me to have the same amount of success. That that that's that's how you get out of the league. Yeah. And if I'm Bill Dewitt Jr., last thing here, what really got me going was 2000 on the heels of mcguire bringing all of those people into the ballpark cardinals spent money they went and got three new starters they went and got a new center fielder new shortstop new second baseman new catcher 
and it's not working now, right. 23 years later. I'm going to go back to what worked for me. I Yes, I'm Bill DeWitt, and I started the analytics movement by bringing Jeff Luno in in 2003. But I'm looking around at those other teams that are going old school and succeeding, like the Braves and the Rangers, and I'm going to go back and go a little old school. That's what I'm doing. Can do something. That is our fresh take here on 101 ESPN. Coming up, big weekend for a city as they take on Toronto. Up in Toronto. Is it Toronto FC? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it is. I knew it was a football club. I just didn't. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure. So, But Matthew gave us a, a clear yes. It's not the Toronto Argonauts or anything like that. Nice. Uh, CFL. Some really exciting it actually things. actually is the Toronto Rough Riders, crazily enough. Really? They just can't stop naming that? teams that. Can't stop. Uh, but... <laughs> What a great story this is, and some individuals are having sensational years for St. Louis City SC. We're going to talk about them next time, 101 ESPN. Stalls are back with you for Auto Center's Nissan Herculaneum. Throughout the month of July, you're not going to find a better dealership experience than at Auto Center's Nissan Herculaneum. Over 700 cars in stock in one location, not multiple locations across town. They've got options for everyone to choose from. Brand new Nissans, quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. You got to go visit my friends at Auto Center's Nissan. Go home in your new car and do it today. Here's the best part. They have a 30-day return promise. So 30 days from purchase, whatever reason you need to bring the vehicle back, they're going to give you a full refund at Auto Center's Nissan Herculaneum. They're also going to give you a way to finance the vehicle, too. Good credit, bad credit, it doesn't matter. They have financing options for you at Auto Center's Nissan Herculaneum. So go check them out. New Pathfinders, new Rogues, new Altimas, new Titans. You're going to love it at Auto Center's Nissan Herculaneum. And don't forget to tell them Anthony Stalter sent you. Again, Auto Center's Nissan Herculaneum. your insight and honest opinions on the world of sports. Use the mic drop feature in the 101. Live from the Car Shield Studio, this is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Nobody was expecting it. We were, though, but other people were not expecting that. You know, they're finally giving us the, the respect that we deserve. You know, and they're starting to see that that we're not a we're no joke, and we're a team that's you know that you have to prepare for, and a team that you know will catch you if you're not prepared. It's been amazing to be able to give the fans this this amazing year that we've had so far. Proud of what we've achieved, but we know that there's so much more that we can achieve. St. Louis City SC's Sam Adinerad, who has a couple of goals and an assist in the last two matches. And uh, City SC, the leaders in the West with 35 points, will make their way to the pitch in Toronto this weekend to take on Toronto FC. A lot of cool things happening with this franchise in their first year, which is when you look back at what 
uh, Lutz told us before the season. Oh, we really aren't going to be competitive. Fans need to be mm-hmm. patient. We are, we're, we're building for the future, and here they are, the top team in the West, with Roman Berkey, their goalie, who could be the MVP of MLS, and Tim Parker, both named as MLS All-Stars. You think about that, and think about the fact that they're probably missing a couple of other All-Stars in Klaus and Edward Leuven. Man, what a team and what a story this has been. What a side, I guess, and what a story this has been. It really has been, and especially you hate to see the team lose kind of their backbone or their spine that they built with these designated players, and nobody could pick that that would happen or predict that that would happen. You have Zhao Klaus still out. There was some positive news coming out of training yesterday with Edward Leuven. He was returning. He's been dealing with a quad injury, and he was able to return to some training. There's still not a set date. It's going to take a while to get him to come back, but you have had had other guys step up in this situation and luckily you do still have Roman Berkey and Berkey has been fantastic he was also named uh, all-star along with Tim Parker so congratulations to those two yeah I think City has been the story of the MLS season I mean other than Messi coming over that was obviously a huge story a few weeks a few weeks ago but what City has done we talked to as you said we talked to Lutz earlier this year we talked to Bradley Carnell and and as we've gone throughout the season just speaking to the guys the players Tim Parker, who we spoke to earlier when the season first started, they always seemed like they had more confidence. And, and Lutz, it felt like he was just, you know, under under promising and over delivering. Mm-hmm. That was kind of the mindset, I think, for him. But what they have done this season, and it, as you all said, without uh, their star, Jal Klaus was leading, was at tops of uh, MLS and scoring before he got injured. They have done a fantastic job, and they're just finding guys. Giacchino has has come in and done good, done a good job. Uh, Adiron had done, come in and did, done a good job. They just are doing a great job of finding players, plugging them in, and playing well. And when you have Roman Berkey playing at the level that he has been then you're, you're going to win a lot of games. So despite all these injury concerns, they have maintained the top of the Western Conference standings with 35 points in 20 matches. I think that shows you a lot of what they have built over the year, over this past year, bringing players in, bringing those personalities. And CD, you're talking about some of those names. Tim Parker with his MLS experience, that pedigree he has. And then you bring in stars like Roman Berkey from overseas. You bring in Zhao Klaus, Leuven. You wonder how all those personalities and egos are going to come together because so we're talking about the Cardinals. You have a lot of stars, but it's not panning out that well this season. But with City SC, the fact that they brought them in early and these guys are able to come together as a unit and kind of put egos aside and play for each other, that, that says a lot about this group. And how much credit do you have to give Bradley Carnell, right? Because yes. he's doing more with less, without Leuven, without Klaus. They go through that 0-3-1 stretch, zero wins, uh, or no, 0-1-3. Oh, oh, zero wins, one draw, and, and uh, three defeats and they bounce back and they they've won two in a row and it, it's it, it would have been easy to see them spiral downward when they went into that bad stretch but they get back on the pitch and they train and they come back with a couple of uh, terrific victories and then hopefully they can get one against Toronto this week it's funny we're talking about this and just off a segment talking about the Cardinals because everything that Luce Spanish deal has said from the get-go we you know he kind of caught a lot of flack in the soccer world when he said we're gonna be a designated team we're not gonna worry about designated players despite having yes. two very talented ones and they keep backing up every note of it I mean like you said Bradley Carnell changes the system a little bit over these last two games to get them two big wins because two matches, two matches because they couldn't keep going with the same system because of how important Leuven was and then Jabola Blum wasn't 100 percent healthy so they just couldn't play the same system they completely changed in the middle of the season what was already working and they found something again that was more successful I think that's one of the easy ways to highlight a good coach and you know what's cool about this is that as an admitted soccer novice. I don't know the sport oh, well. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan. Yeah. I, I enjoy it, but I, I am a novice. But they do make it fun. They're an entertaining team to watch. And there's a lot of soccer matches uh, where you watch, and, and it's not what St. Louis City SC brings to the table. They're just, to me, an unusually not electrifying, but an unusually entertaining soccer club. 
It really is. And I tell everyone, because I've had people ask me, okay, I haven't been able to get tickets yet to a City SC game. Is it worth it? I'm like, 100% is completely worth it. I, I can't, the thing is, is that, you know, with when you go to a Cardinals and Blues game, it, the atmosphere is different. I feel like it's more of the fans kind of taking in every single moment, cheering at the correct times, booing at the correct times. And it's mostly people just kind of taking in what's happening with the game. And at City SC, they do that. Plus, it's like, non-stop action on the field and the fans are matching that energy with the flag waving and the yeah. excitement and the songs and the chants it's awesome i love all the st louis flags by the way in the end zone it's awesome soccer in st louis has always been you know one of the the top sports around i mean, from from when you're a child growing up playing all those years it's just something that st louis enjoys and they love and have the, having this team playing at the level that they're playing at I, i'm not surprised that they show up in droves and they are loud throughout the entire match and, and screaming it and that energizes the players on the field that gives them when they can hear that when they hear that constantly that cheering that chanting that gives them a a, a little bit more juice to continue to play harder and if you've noticed uh the away matches it's been unbelievable how full every time the supporter section at the away match because you always get a little bit of corner it's kind of like college football in that mm -hmm. way um you always get a little corner and every time no matter where it is san jose was absolutely packed supporter section i don't know how toronto is going to go passports and crossing a border always a little yeah. bit difficult but nonetheless Man. it wouldn't shock me at all if if we hear reports from the game that there was a really loud nice supporter game. section that that the boys liked hearing from here's another interesting thing about this season for for me it might not be as intriguing for somebody who's just immersed in mls but a franchise like Toronto that's been around is struggling. Colorado's been around. They're last place in the West. LA Galaxy's been around. Portland Timbers have been around. Sporting KC, a lot of, his not historic, but a lot of long-term franchises are really struggling. That's just in the West and in the East. You've got Toronto that we mentioned, Chicago, New York Red Bulls, uh, New York City the FC. Red Birds. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's, and the younger franchises, Cincinnati, Nashville, uh, Obviously, St. Louis, uh, some of the Austin is, is still OK. A lot of the younger franchises are, are doing really well. But it, it surprises me that the expansion squads have been given such a great opportunity at the expense, I would guess, of some of the, the, the veteran franchises that have been around the block. Yeah, well, and I've said this before, whenever they started building, the way that they have set up City SC, and this goes back to the ownership group with Carol, uh, Carol and Kendall and Kavanaugh and everything that they put in money and effort-wise, that was also them making sure that we would be seeing this success so early on with their inaugural season. They spent so much time, money, and resources, because even if you look at Nashville, they didn't have a stadium ready right. for them. They didn't have a training facility ready to go for them. They were playing inside Nissan Stadium where the Titans play and they were having to train in other areas. And so when you're bringing in players and they already have a facility ready to go for them and a stadium ready to go for them, that also elevates their level of play. Definitely. So St. Louis City SC, 630 tomorrow on Apple TV. And congratulations to Berkey and Parker being named to the MLS All-Star teams. 630, by the way, the kickoff tomorrow in Toronto. Uh, do you have a fighter, Matthew, for the fight? We do have a fighter, yes. We do have a fighter. His name is Matthew. This is a good thing. Oh. Okay, good. This sounds like Did a setup. Did you pick him because he has your name? Yeah. No, he was asking <laughs> in the in the video chat, and I had promised him a few weeks ago to get him on the list, so yep. he's in. And historically, people, for whatever reason, have not trusted the fight. Well, now, you can actually watch the fight occur. All you need to do is go to YouTube. Uh, fire up the old YouTube on your... Yes, Matthew. It, it, uh, it's CD. not the fight. It's the bludgeon. Shut they get to okay. watch it in person. They get okay. to watch Randy slaughter his competitors. I love it. it it's it, he takes pride in it. Do you see the little smirk on his face <laughs> when he beats somebody down as he reaches to his left and pushes his button? That ex he gets, he so gets excited. He's, he's excited. Yeah, I love it. You have to see. I get it. to see you in all your wisdom and and just really how you hammer put, put the hammer down on him. In the immortal <laughs> words of the great Bob <laughs> Ramsey, I like winning. There you go. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, the fight is coming up next here on 101 ESPN.
Hey, I want you to do me a favor when you grocery shop this weekend. Even if you're in West County or if you're uh, not in Crestwood, I want you to check out the new Schnooks Crestwood store. It's amazing. They've completely renovated it. And if you haven't been inside to check it out, you need to because the options at the food hall are amazing. So you can go there during lunch hour or dur- for dinner and check out Soul Taco or, oh, hey, barbecue and burgers and bites all right there at Schnooks and Crestwood. They have a fresh pour station when you walk in so you can choose from a selection of craft beers and wine and soft drinks that you can drink while you're shopping. It's a brand new shopping experience where you can do all of that at Schnooks in Crestwood. You'll see upgrades throughout the store, so you have to check it out. And if you're looking for a great meal this weekend, well, stop by the butcher shop over there and get yourself a beautiful ribeye. Then go to the frozen food section, get some tater tots to make, make sure that you pick up some of that fresh broccoli, and have yourself a terrific meal when you stop by Schnooks Crestwood. Download the Schnooks Rewards app before you stop by and check out a store that's been open since 1964 but is now brand new. It's the Schnooks on Watson in Crestwood. This is Rocky with your Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. The Cardinals yesterday avoid the sweep against the Miami Marlins with a 3 to nothing win. Jack Flaherty, six and two-thirds innings pitch, nine hits, zero earned runs, two walks, and five strikeouts in the win. Cardinals are back in action in Chicago before the All-Star break, facing off against the White Sox for a three-game series. It's going to be Jordan Montgomery starting off the series for the Cardinals. Today he faces off against the righty for the White Sox, Dylan Cease. Cease on the season 3-3 three and three with a 4.10 ERA. That that is your Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling, an independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. Welcome back to the opening drive. I'm Kerry Davis, joined by Brooke Grimsley, and our it is time for the fight. And our fighter today is Matthew. Matthew, how you doing? 
Ah, fantastic. How about you, CD? I'm doing well. Are you enjoying the uh, YouTube version of our show? I saw you <laughs> I got, texting Yeah, earlier. I got you guys on the TV. Like, uh, it's awesome. I'm cleaning the house, getting oh, ready, nice. cooking breakfast, how everything. Are, yeah, how, you guys how are, are we TV. looking? Are we looking wonderful? We're looking yeah, spectacular? Yeah, I'm questioning a couple, like, you guys are like not into each other, so I'm like, what are they doing there? But it's cool. <laughs> that's, our, that's our insider info. We all get to take a sneak peek behind the curtain, see what's going on. Are you it's ready to take revealed. on Randy Carricker? As ready as I'm gonna be. So, all right, here we go. The Blues franchise has only one Stanley Cup, but two Conn Smythe winners. Who won the trophy in a Blues losing effort in the final? Is it Red Berenson, Jacques Plant, or Glenn Hall? Uh, Glenn Hall. Which Cardinal slugger holds the record for the fewest games to reach 350 career home runs? Is it Albert Pujols, Mark McGuire, or Sam Musial? <sighs> I'll go with my favorite player, stay in the man. Happy birthday to Cardinals lefty great Bob Forsh. Who did the Cardinals trade Forsh for from the Astros in 1988? Is it John Morris? Denny Whaling or Tim Jones? Jeez, that was the one year before I was born. I'll go Tim Jones. Which Cardinals relief pitcher was third on the Card on the Cardinals last season in pitcher wins with nine? Is it Ryan Helsley, Andre Palante, or Henesis Cabrera? Whew. Let's uh Helsley was closing, so let's what were the options again? Ryan Helsley, Andre Plante, or Henesis Cabrera? Uh, let's go Plante. I think he was mid-relief most of the year, so he probably got a couple of them. All right, we'll double-check our score, and we will bring in Randy Carricker. How you feeling, Matthew? <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like you had a uh, bit of a bit bit of a little bit of a sweat going on there. Yeah, well, I'm excited to be on TV, you know. I'm listening to my own voice right now. Nice. Maybe one day we should put the <laughs> fighter on as well. Like you have that. to FaceTime in. I said that. I don't know how we would do it. I don't know if, you like, just have how does FaceTime, FaceTime work with but YouTube? Like, how you do we get him on the FaceTime on the Zoom? Are you an engineer Zoom. or something? Yeah. Audio, engineer. Brooke, audio. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't not, do video. Come on now. Video. I'm learning video. I don't know how. I don't know if Zoom and FaceTime can talk or with Instagram or YouTube. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You're an engineer. You can figure it out. I'll ask Randy, he's an audio engineer. He, there you go. Say hello to Matthew. Not that Matthew. This oh, Matthew. Matthew, good morning. How are you doing? Ah, fantastic. How about you, Randy? I'm doing great. Thanks for listening. Thanks for playing. We do appreciate it. Of course. All right. You ready, Randy? Ready. All right. Here we go. The Blues franchise has one Stanley Cup, but two Conn Smythe winners. Who won the trophy in a Blues losing effort in the final? I would have... I'd have to guess that's Mr. Goldie Glenn Hall. Against Which? Montreal, I believe. The Montreal Canadiens. <laughs> Sorry. I, 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 no, no problem. I know that. I know you always get rolling. Okay. <laughs> Which Cardinal slugger holds the record for the fewest games to reach 350 career home runs? It's got a... Um, this is good. Uh, I got to go with Big Mac. I got to go with Mark McGuire. Happy birthday to Cardinals, not lefty great, righty, Bob Forsh. Who did the card? I just, I, Ron Burgundy, Randy. Oh, yeah. Okay. It <laughs> the, the question was originally written for Steve Carlton. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, is and that I, what, is that what he ran over? It. I was like, yeah, what? Uh -oh. Because uh -oh. I read it and I was like, that sounds wrong now when I read uh -oh. it. Uh, just call me Ron. I'm going to read what you write down. My Hopefully it's, it's okay. My brain got. works differently at 1045. I am Ron Burgundy. <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy? <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to Cardinals great Bob Forsh. Who did the Cardinals trade Forsh for from the Astros in 1988? Well, first of all, they traded uh, Steve Carlton for Rick Wise. Okay. <laughs> uh, the, but they traded Bob Forsh for Denny Walling, a left-handed hitter from the Astros. Somebody had Denny Walling as their favorite player. So uh, somebody, maybe it was Greg. Amzinger. Somebody had Denny Walling as their favorite Cardinal. It was pretty I think funny. I, 
I think mm. he did say that. You know that, what? Yeah. Now that you say it, I yeah. remember him saying that. You're right. Yeah. He, he talked about how random it was. Yeah. Bald guy. It's always weird. It's always striking to me when, <laughs> when a baseball player is bald. And so with the Cardinals get Denny Walling and walk into the clubhouse, because you, know, you only see him with a cap. Yeah. Walk into the clubhouse, he's bald. So. Didn't know who he Do was. Do you feel like you're bamboozled? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we <laughs> we traded for a 48-year-old guy? <laughs> <laughs> Which Cardinals relief pitcher was third on the Cardinals last season and pitcher wins with nine? Reliever, you said? Relief pitcher, yes. Ryan Helsley. See, Fridays are interesting on the fight because sometimes Fridays is when the listener likes to pick the data to, to beat Randy and send us into like two whole days of stewing. A tailspin. You can see it on YouTube, Carrie. What were you just doing? Yeah, this is what I do prior to the fight because it's not a fight. He's, he's stirring the pot right now. Stirring it. What is he's it? He's stirring the pot right now. So, did Carrie successfully stir the pot? Do we have to go into a weekend of just consternation from mainly me and Randy and fun from Carrie <laughs> and happiness from Matthew or does Megamind roll on through this short week? Ring that bell go crazy folks go crazy the winner and still champion of the fight randy character the fight is presented by golf discount of st louis with the most experienced club fitters in town why shop anywhere else It's so damn hot. Milk was a bad choice. He's on fire. <laughs> well, Matthew, I wasn't sure if it was the Jack Buck line or the other 13 things we played for you, but unfortunately, it looks like Randy he's won today. On. Yeah, he's, he's pouring it on today. Yeah. He told me to. He beat you four to one today, Matthew. I'm very sorry. <laughs> And you had to watch on the YouTube, too. Yeah, you you can go back and watch the celebration on the YouTube as well. Let's go through those answers. Extra, the Randy. extra one's always funnier. <laughs> That's extra. The Blues franchise has one Stanley Cup, but two Conn Smythe winners who won the trophy in a Blues losing effort in the final. It was, in fact, the first final the Blues ever played in. Glenn Hall played so well against, against the heavily favored Canadians, and he said that he played so well, and the Blues were so low. Like, the chances of them to win were so low that he doesn't think losing the final takes anything away from his Conn Smythe win, which I think is a fantastic answer from Mr. Goalie. Which Cardinal slugger holds the record for the fewest games to reach 350 career home runs? Mark McGuire did it in 1,200. 280 hour pool holes is eighth on that list. Happy birthday to Cardinals great Bob Forsh. Who did the Cardinals trade Forsh for from the Astros in 1988? It was in fact Danny Walling. You said he was bald. Yeah, bald. Guy. At like 34, I think is when they traded for. I think yeah. 32 or something like that. Yeah, something like that. God, that's unfortunate. And which Cardinals relief pitcher was third on the Cardinals last season and pitcher wins with nine? It was in fact Ryan Helsley. Randy Carricker wins that one four to one. Matthew, thank you so much again for joining the show and joining the fight today. Good job, Matthew. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah. I don't like that one. Who won? I've never heard that You never heard that one? That used to be his favorite. That used to be his personal favorite. I've never heard that one. Can I hear it one more time? I think Michelle would like, would literally like, Randy, That now that's mean Randy, whenever he pulled that one out. I'm kind of a big deal. Oh, Oh, my God. Uh, I love it. It makes my day. So bad. Was that, was that a bludgeon today? <laughs> yeah, that was a beat down. Uh. I would love to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did that, uh, by the way, uh, did, uh, did I? Uh, did I? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Isn't man. this an indictment of our entire American society? Yes. <laughs> well, you can do what you want to us, but we're not going to sit here and listen to you bad mouth the United States of America. Oh I love it. God. I am a fan. <laughs> Sign me up. Did you, put yeah. that in? Did you put that in after my fireworks rant the other day? <laughs> no, it's, it's been around. Okay. Boy, is this great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming up next on 101 ESPN, we've got uh, a win, so we've got a bird watch here on the opening drive on 101 ESPN.
field to give you the latest on your St. Louis Cardinals. This is Bird Watch on the opening drive. It is time for Bird Watch. As the Cardinals take one of four in Miami and head to Chicago to take on the White Sox this weekend. Chip Carey, by the way, is going to join us coming up at 9.15. And Danny Mack will be in here for the balloon party from 10 to 11 here on 101 ESPN. Uh, Brooke, what are you thinking for the bird watch? My bird watch... And it is a bird, not a bird dropping today. Is Jack Flaherty because it was a fantastic performance and he looks more like... I don't know if you could say himself or how you were hoping for him to be this season recently. And that's a good thing for him, but it's also a good thing for the Cardinals. I don't know if you guys saw the report, but Ken Rosenthal is reporting that, you know, basically Jack Flaherty and Jordan Montgomery are as good as gone Mm -hmm. when it comes to the trade deadline. And so you're looking at their value. And that's what I was telling you guys earlier is now I'm starting to look at this game of who is going to get us the more uh, the most value for building in the future for 2024 when you're putting these pieces together, who's going to help you compete? And so Jack Flaherty, he has been really well. Six and two-thirds of no-run ball last night. Scatter, nine hits, five strikeouts. He's faced 30 batters, or he faced 30 batters, most by a Cardinals pitcher this season, which that's good Mm -hmm. when you're talking about that. And then 12 and two-thirds innings pitch, scoreless streak going on right now. Third longest by a Cardinal this season. That was really, I felt like, one of his best performances this season, that and his performance against the Yankees. And you think about the fact that he really didn't pitch for a year and a half. And maybe it does take more time than we give credit for to round back into form. Now, I'm one of those people that believes once you have a shoulder issue, you have a shoulder issue when you're a pitcher. He said last year when... Mosaic said that he had a slap tear. He said, yeah, but I've been pitching with it my whole career. Well, if you've been pitching with a labrum tear, you're going to have problems. That being said, he has not allowed a run yet. Here we are on the, uh, the 7th of July. He's had a couple of starts, hasn't allowed a run yet this month. If he can continue that sort of performance, then I have no reason to believe that the Cardinals, if they put him on the market, won't get a haul for Jack Flaherty. I mean... What we saw last night is, I think, the expectation of what we what we thought Jack Flaherty would be every fifth day. And I think when you're looking at Mo's comments of we got five starters, if you get that Jack Flaherty, if you get the Jordan Montgomery of late, if you get the Miles Michaelis that can give you six, seven innings, I think that's in the, the, the ideal of what he thought he was going to get every single day. But it just hasn't happened. Jack Flaherty is a super talent. He, he has a lot of talent. Injuries aside, if he's able to be healthy and able to perform, you do want that guy on your roster. You don't want him to go anywhere. But the, the idea that you can get a lot in return for him, knowing that he is a free agent and he may not want to resign here, you may have to go that route. You're the Dodgers, okay? And you turn bad pitchers into good pitchers anyway. And he's pitching really well. You're the Dodgers and you have... Kershaw on the IL. You have Syndergaard on the IL. You have Dustin May on the 60-day. He's out for the year. You're probably not going to get uh, Bueller back this year. Uh, You've got Yancy Almonte uh, on the 40-man. You've got Shelby Miller on the IL. You've got uh, so many guys. Daniel Hudson just went back on the IL. They have so many injury issues with the Dodgers that Jack Flaherty could go there and be in their rotation tomorrow and be among the, their their five best available pitchers. You uh, offer the Dodgers, Paul DeYoung, and, and, and Jack Flaherty, and you try to get three guys out of one of the top five systems in baseball. It's just hard because when we were talking about earlier how they're developing pitchers and having that stuff pan out, Jack Flaherty is one of your homegrown guys, essentially, and that's tough to see him go. But the way that things have gone over the years, right now when you're trying to build for next season and you know the assets that you could possibly get for him, the value that he has for other teams, teams are always hungry for starting pitchers. You're going to get something good out of that. There it is. Uh, my bird watch is going to be one Tyler O'Neill who started his rehab stint a couple of days ago from a from a back injury. How long? How long you think he had that? About a week back. Yeah, about a week back. Okay, so no. he he is uh, returned down in Memphis a couple of days ago. He went 0 for three in his first game on Tuesday. Went one for three on Wednesday. Did wait, not- wait, wait. 
I'm sorry. Tuesday, he played both Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah, here's the thing: he didn't play Thursday, which is okay. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. yeah. he, he played. He played <laughs> in those two games in his rehab state. We'll see if he's able to go tonight. Um, and the reason why he's important is because you know we we just played a team that mm-hmm. is down two center fielders that may and and. The, the the manager knows Tyler O'Neill, I would say, pretty well. Yeah. So that may be a potential trading landing spot. Now, what you get in return for Tyler O'Neill, I, I truly believe that his days playing baseball in center field, right field, left field for the Cardinals are done mm-hmm. uh, for the big league organization just because he's had so many energy, in, injuries and so many opportunities. I don't think he's going to get another opportunity. But if he can perform well in these minor league stints, that may be a place – for him to end up in a, a trade piece. And I don't know what you get back, probably a few prospects, something that you can low work on in a low-level prospect, but it removes him from from that outfield uh, cluster that you had earlier in the season. You don't have to worry about anything that's going on with him going forward. And don't you just get the sense, and I have no knowledge whatsoever, but it just doesn't seem like he and Ali Marmal are on the same page. I, I think that's a pretty good sense you might have. I, I think a lot of people <laughs> could tell that maybe things are not well between Tyler mm-hmm. O'Neill and Ali Marmal. Uh, it, it is interesting because they before Tyler O'Neill left, he did tell reporters that it would be like a very short and kind of even scripted rehab stint that he was going through, so it's not surprising these have been very short outings and very sporadic. Um, more like a spring training is what he like story of his career spring training in what what month is it? I, i'm july I, yeah, I, I really do feel bad for tyler o'neill yeah. and because he is he has when you see guys that have so much talent and whether it be because of injuries or confidence that they just can't get over the hump that is that that's frustrating for me as a player because i know you know god-given talent guys and and when they just can't get over that hump it's, I don't want to say it's a waste of, of, of talent, but it's just not maximizing the full potential and full talent that you were, you were given. So we used to have a guy here that did uh, the mid-morning show. You'll remember him if you're driving around, perhaps. Bob Stelton. You remember Stelts, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and Stelts was a workout warrior. He had just huge arms. So he had been in Seattle before he came to St. Louis, then he went back to Seattle. When um, he goes back to Seattle, Tyler O'Neill is a minor leaguer, and he's at the... Uh, Mariners Fan Fest. And Tyler O'Neill, as we know, has a, a deep voice. Mm-hmm. And Stelton interviews him during uh, the, this Fan Fest. And at the end of the interview, they go to the break, and uh, Bob Stelton says, man, you should get into the, this business. you got nice pipes. And because he's got the deep voice. Yeah. And, uh, and Tyler says, Thanks. I work hard on him. Grab his bicep. <laughs> he, he seriously is super, super nice. Yeah. And he he does work his tail off. And there's nobody that can doubt that. And watching him over the years. He works and too hard. That, and I think that's part of the issue is that he's probably had a certain level. You, we were talking about earlier when guys, what's got them here, mm-hmm. right? And for that to all of a sudden need to change, I'm sure is a lot to grapple with and realizing you might need to change your routine and things like that. And some guys are just more prone to injury in general. Yeah. yeah. <whistles> guys, do you like roller coasters? Yes. Not broken no. ones. Did you see that one that was broke? Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm cool. That, that was one that's not broken. Not a, not a fan. Okay. It, it's, it's always working. Okay. But its name is Nolan Gorman. <laughs> and we, we, we have to embrace the roller coaster nature of Nolan Gorman, who in the first month of the season had an OPS of 878, then 955 in May, and then 439 in June, but back up to 1.076 so far in July. We are going to have ups. We are going to have downs with Gorman. But at the end of the year, he's going to wind up being productive for you. The numbers are going to look good at the end of the year. And that's why I am embracing the roller coaster ride. This year, his OPS is up to 802 after this great start in July. He's got 17 home runs. He's got 52 runs batted in. He's only hitting 237. That's probably the kind of hitter he'll be. But he's slugging 477. His slug will probably get higher. And he'll probably wind up being an 850 OPS guy. But you're going to have months like you had in June. And you're just going to have to deal with it because it's hard to find a group of nine hitters that are consistent across the board. He's going to be in consistent but he's going to be fun and you never know what's going to happen next <laughs> randy's yeah. advice to fans yeah. deal with it yeah deal with it oh that's it, the name of the roller coaster embrace the roller coaster <laughs> okay. yes it's a, it's a screaming eagle or whatever uh, what, what's our it big was, it was the screaming eagle was one the batman uh um, what's the big one now at six flags st louis 
The ninja uh, was one oh, for ninja, a long yeah. uh, the time. Ba- Batman's like the biggest like like you know like loop to loop kind of roller coaster. Uh, but Mister Freeze and the boss was yeah, the I'm boss. Good. I think is the biggest yeah. wooden coaster in America. Oh, or when, yeah. when they wooden, built the boss like back in like me. 05, the it was the biggest wooden coaster. The, the thrill of riding the Screaming Eagle was the fact that it was you you would. And you no. always go to, like you're gonna fall off. And you always go to school, and you not fun. know one kid who was on the screen. You go want to jump tracks or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh that, my, are yeah. you serious? Dead serious. That's a boy yes. thing. It, it always gets shut down. Like it's, it was <laughs> like, yes. once a summer. Ridiculous. There's not a, a roller coaster. The, does, which one goes upside down? Does the ninja go upside down? Ninja goes upside down, but it's it's uh, the lowest height requirement at no. Six Flags to go upside down. Batman's like the next level up, and then Mister Freeze is like the quick shot. You go backwards and all that. Did you see those people get stuck? Did yes, you see those people get down. stuck upside down? Yeah. That, that was always my greatest fear. I don't do carnivals. I, like, I, don't I don't like do, roller coasters other than that. I won't do any of that. I'm Mm-mm. I'm good. I'll watch. I'll watch. I Just a wave. Enjoy. Yeah, it looks fun. Hey, have a great time. I'm not doing it. Uh, Batman the Ride is open right now if you go to Six Flags. Yes. The, wow, the amount of times in my life I spent like three hours just to ride that thing That's once. That's the other thing. Ooh. Who the hell wants that? That's my problem. But there's the flip side, Carrie. There's a the time I went to like Six Flags and there was no one else in the park. Well, then that's, just literally that's just when jump you on do and go it, again, again, again. You got to wait three hours for a ride. Sometimes there's just like dead days at Six yeah. Flags. Oh. Sometimes uh, there's days where there's a thousand. Uh, Screaming Eagle is what Nolan Gorman is, though. Because that's just up and down <laughs> into the depths and then up again. There's no up going upside down or anything. He's a, he's the Screaming Eagle. And it's oh. great. Uh, there you have it. That's our bird watch on 101 ESPN. Next up, we've got our rush hour, hour, rush hour reset. Stick around. It's coming your way on the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Hey, if you're sitting on the backyard this weekend and you're looking around and you're saying, you know what, we need to do something different in this yard, whether it's getting a fence installed, maybe you want to turn that deck into a sunroom or a screen room, or uh, maybe you just want to have a new deck. You want to replace the one you have. Get in touch with my friends at Chesterfield Fence and Deck. You can see what they do at ChesterfieldFence.com or give them a call at 800-300-4054. They do such fantastic work. They built my fence. And just think about it from this perspective. Okay, you want to not have to deal with 105 degree heat in St. Louis, okay? And you've got a deck, but you can use it into a more functional area. Turn it into a more functional area by turning it into a sunroom or a screen room. Get a ceiling fan, get it air conditioned, get a big screen TV in there. Make it another room in your home. And Chesterfield Fence and Deck will come out, give you a pre, free, no obligation project design, show you other things that they've done, and really do fabulous work. They're A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau. They've been in St. Louis for 55 years. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, Chesterfield Fence and Deck is wonderful. Tell them Randy sent you. You can get 48 months of interest-free financing at Chesterfield Vents and Deck on the web at ChesterfieldVents.com. Call 800-300-4054. Chesterfield Vents and Deck, the sign you have the very best.
Reset. Brought to you by Clubhouse Turf, your exclusive partner of Celebrity Greens. We're redefining private golf. Nine oh two in St. Louis. Your time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. Brooke Grimsley, Super Bowl champ, Kerry Davis wearing his Pittsburgh Steelers T-shirt today. <laughs> Randy Carricker with you. We've got an hour to go. Chip Carey will join us coming up at nine fifteen, and uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, the, the Cardinals issues and, and trying to fix them, plus rock and roll later in the hour. The Cardinals in Chicago to take on the White Sox on the heels of salvaging the finale of their four-game series in um, in Miami over the course of the week. I almost forgot where they were. A uh, scoreless game until the sixth when Nolan Arenado puts the Cardinals on top. The 2-1 pitch. Driven towards center. Myers on his horse. Still going, still going. It's an opposite field homer for Arenado. Count and he gulps one out to right center, and the Cardinals break through in the sixth. It's one to nothing. Cardinals scored single runs on an Alec Burleson uh, base uh, infield single that scored Nolan Gorman. Car- Gorman also doubled home a run in the eighth inning, and the Cardinals win it by a score of three nothing. Flaherty six and two thirds. He allows no runs on nine hits, struck out five, and walked two. I think it just was one of those that would use my fastball a lot. I actually don't think my slider was very good tonight. I, you know, threw kind of threw some over the middle, which was kind of led towards the end of the game there, where um, was kind of leaning on fastball, curveball, a lot of fastball. I was able to put, kind of put it in good spots. Um, you know, that's kind of what the game's what the game's built off of is going with fastball command, but um, just kind of made pitches when we needed to. You know, guys did a good job making plays. And the Cardinals win it by a score of 3-0 tonight in Chicago against the White Sox. A 7-10 start at Guaranteed Rate Field. I believe that's still the name of it. Uh, Jordan Montgomery will go to the Hill for the Cardinals. He'll be opposed by Dylan Cease. And Cease is a guy that I think every Cardinal fan should be, want to watch and be interested in. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. He he is somebody that you want. And I'm just interested in what you would have to give up for him and what that would uh-huh. look like. Yeah. Do you think Nolan Gorman's included in that? I would think so. Yeah. And I would, I think one of the things that works to the Cardinals advantage in matching up with the White Sox is that their top prospect is a shortstop. So they, they probably would want Mason win, but they probably wouldn't require Mason win, but I, it's going to hurt. You're probably going to have to give up Graceffo and a guy like Gorman and maybe uh Newt bar Carlson. <sighs> Parting with Lars Newt Bar. It, it, it is. And that's the way that it goes sometimes, right? That's the way that it goes. If you want something shiny and new, yeah. you're going to have to give up some pieces. You, last year, around well, around the trade deadline, they were headed to Washington, and we were talking about just mm-hmm. getting Juan Soto back on the plane coming home. Yeah, yeah. We, we mentioned that. Well, they're going into the All-Star break. The, the trade deadline is a few weeks away after that. Just, just get Dylan on the plane. I mean, just make the deal happen. You don't have to send a plane for him. You don't have to pay extra fare for him to get from Chicago. He doesn't have to drive. You don't have to send him on a train. Just get him back on your team plane and come on back. You get a couple of days off during the All-Star break and you're ready yeah. to roll. And they may still think they have a chance. They might not be inclined to trade Dylan. They might not be inclined to trade him at all because he's still young and he's still got control. But uh, I, I'm saying that if you uh, if you want him, you're going to have to give mm-hmm. something up. Here's another thing. If you look at the top 30 prospects of the White Sox, the first catchers you see are number 27 and 28. So you might have to do Herrera in a deal like that. But you know what? You've got Contreras here for five years. So... Your DH? Yeah. No, your oh. catcher. Oh. You're, he Brooke, he's the everyday catcher. Oh That's gosh. what they told us when they signed him. You don't, okay. you don't, you don't remember that? I know they did something halfway DH. through, like through the first three weeks of the season where they did make decisions. But Would you guys give up Herrera, Gorman, and Graceffo to get Dylan Cease? Yes. No. Yeah. No, Absolutely why are you not. saying no? I I absolutely not. Who, 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 who is up, that? I'm not giving up Nolan Gorman. I'm not that. giving up Nolan Gorman unless it's an absolute 100% ace. I'll trade Nolan you, Gorman for an ace. But you've got a couple of lefty hitters, though. Well, actually, maybe more because you've got Newt, mm-hmm. right? I trained him. Yeah, Alec Carlson, who also a is a relief pu- pitcher. A surplus of position players. This is what you yeah. do. 
Yeah, I'd be a lot more okay with with Newt and like a young pitcher combined with maybe not, like a, like, a, like, a, like, a Don, like a like a Donnie. Brooke, yeah. I'd rather not, trade that for, and, for no. I'm sorry, no. You don't You're trade. You're not touching Newt. No. <laughs> Corbin's got five years of control left, and, he, and he's got 40 home run power. That's, I mean, did you miss the last that, segment where Randy said that you would be? You like roller coasters, though, so it doesn't bother you. I'm just saying, like, that's that's and the it, one. Here's the thing. That's it's, the one you don't bite the bullet it's on. It's not about giving up on Nolan Gorman. Here's, the, I wasn't there reports, Randy, that they were even floating around Nolan Gorman's name yes. when looking. Yeah, for Sean Murphy, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So, and and by the way, Dylan Cease last year uh, just had a magnificent season. So. And he hasn't been as great this year, but we know he has the stuff. He's an all-star. He was second in the uh, voting for Cy Young last year in the American League. So just intriguing, and you'll be able to watch him tonight. And like we said, no guarantee that the White Sox are even going to sell him, but that's a guy that if he does get moved, the Cardinals better be in on him. Because here's the thing. The pitching problem is not going away. This is this is a giant issue that they're going to have to figure out moving forward for this group you you have to you have to make some very uncomfortable moves some trades that a lot mm-hmm. of people are not going to be happy about Puke point moves exactly <laughs> it just feels uncomfortable yep. just, just really it, it it feels dirty when you do it but hopefully it works out in the long run yeah and if nolan gorman nolan gorman goes on to hit 40 home runs a season well then it is what it is dylan cease better be a cy young award winner well, he was second last year. There you go. Uh, last year, by the way. You don't want... Rock, have you not watched... I know you watch all these games. Have you not watched these games? Yeah. I, like, I know I you like watch. Nolan Gorman. I, I, think he's, I think he's... So let me ask you a question. Year. How, how <laughs> well is Nolan Gorman going to do when you're down eight to nothing? He's not... I mean, he might get you to eight to four. His 40 home <laughs> runs are going to play well, aren't they? Listen, I'm not saying you don't trade Nolan Gorman for a pitcher. I just... It's Dylan Seas isn't the pitcher, in my opinion. The, here's the issue that we don't. Would There's you so a, much control. He's got so thing. much power. Rock, wouldn't you agree that there have been times where they have held on to players for too long or maybe not even evaluating players properly, and then you're stuck in positions where you are this season yes. where it's like we should have tried to move this guy for something a little while you're ago. You're talking about Lars Newbar, right? Don't you dare. I'm, <laughs> Tommy Edmond, <laughs> Brendan Donovan, a couple of young players. I'm just saying. I know. Honest Wagner, you know. Well, Paul DeYoung, that's Honest another Wagner name. is going to L.A. Yeah. We've already settled yeah. that. By the way, Dylan Cease last year set the MLB record of 14 consecutive starts with one run or no runs oh, allowed. sign me up today. You know yeah. how many more wins we would have if we had 14 starts with one or zero runs? It'd be pretty good. It'd be pretty damn good. Just three and three with a four point one zero ERA. Look, this year. If he, if needs we, a, he needs a new. I, uh, he's I got will, a higher whip than Montgomery. Oh, listen. Right. So you're just going to base everything on what he's done for a terrible White Sox team That's this year. what I was going to say. He needs to change Certainly doesn't scenery. help, but who, I, I'm just saying. I'm just going off what we see this year. Because the problem, because the entire thing we're talking about is guys not being able to put together multiple years in a row of the but same. This is the, the same quality thing. we've seen. Tyler O'Neill. People are talking about right now about Nolan Gorman being Paul DeYoung in a couple of years. That's the question: Is can a guy continue? Paul DeYoung? Okay. So you don't want to fix the pitching, is what you're telling me. I do want to he fix the it. pitching, but not with this trade. That's just the one person. I, it's Jordan Walker, Nolan Gorman are my untouchables. So real quick, those are the, your untouchables. Uh, Nolan, Nolan uh, Arenado and Goldsmith are, are I'm talking about the, the young players okay. of, of, that they could trade. All right. So here is somebody from the text line says, I'm with Matthew on this. I want Cease. Find a way without Gorman. Give up a young pitcher, Newt, and Donovan. Is that enough, you think? Sefo, no, it's not. It's not. Because you need to give the White Sox somebody that can hit home runs. Home runs are a big deal. And... and- the the you swing yeah. miss hit miss they you know it's yeah it's a roller coaster so, and yeah. again just watch the guy pitch tonight he's fun to watch pitch so, so enjoy Nolan it. Gorman is a, a, a career 235 240 yeah. hitter mm-hmm. with 30 to 40 home run potential yes sir okay yeah. he's gonna strike out big in in big moments he will. Because he's going to be swinging big hard as too. hell. He's yeah. a good player. He's a very good but, player. But that's why you have to give him up to get a great pitcher. A guy yeah, that can win to. a Cy Young for you. Cardinals don't really have a guy right now that can win a Cy Young for him. That's important. That's yeah. very important. Yeah. That, we can't even think of it. <laughs> there is your Rush Hour Reset on 101 ESPN. Coming up, we're going to head to Chicago. And the TV voice of the Cardinals on Bally Sports, Chip Carey, is going to join us. I wonder if he's on a hot girl walk, you think? Yes, probably. probably. Find out next on 101 yeah, ESPN. Chicago? Yeah.
one ESPN. Brooke Grimsley, Super Bowl champ, Carrie Davis, Randy Carricker, and we head to the celebrity line and head to the Windy City where the TV voice of the Cardinals on Ballet Sports, Chip Carey, joins us as he does on Friday mornings. Chip, good morning. How you doing? I'm doing great, guys. Good morning. Hey, let's start with this. You talked the other night about hitting one of the Harry Carey's restaurants in Chicago. Did you or will you during this little trip? We're headed out Saturday. We've got a group of 25 people that are going to go in and just gorge themselves on, on Midwestern steak. It's going to be tremendous. I can't wait. <laughs> okay, tell me, what's what's the steak of choice for Chip Carey? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm a big one of my standard guy. line when you ask me about food, Randy. You've seen me <laughs> uh, No, but we're really excited. Uh, it's kind of a home away from home place for me. Grant Porter, who runs the restaurant there, has been a family friend forever since they opened the restaurant in the late 80s with my grandfather. And uh, every time I've come to town, either with the Braves or now with the Cardinals, uh, they've opened their doors to us and, and have welcomed everybody as a kind of a, 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 a home away from home, if you will. So a couple of our coaches are going. I think Ollie's going to join us, our TV crew. And uh, we're just going to get together and have a good time and hopefully have some laughs over, uh, um, you know, a few drinks, some good food, and talk about the first half and get excited about the second half. Love to hear it. Boy, it sure is nice. If, if you're going to be on a bad streak to win that last game of a series so that when you get on the plane, everybody's just a little bit looser and everybody's breathing a little bit easier. For the Marlins credit, first and foremost, Skip Schumacher. Uh, in their front office, they've done an amazing job. Uh, they've, they've slowly and steadily built their farm system up. They've acquired and developed terrific young pitching. And as we know in baseball, I think we tend to overcomplicate things. If you pitch, you win. They've given themselves a chance to do that, first and foremost. Secondly, uh, with John Mabry and John Jay and Skip Schumacher, there is a bit of the cardinal way. You can see the intent with which they try to play fundamentally. They're very, very sound. I think their infield's only made 18 errors all year, so they're doing those little things to make their pitching stuff uh, a whole lot better. And thirdly, they've really revamped the way that they've played the game of baseball in years past. And I saw them a lot when I was with the Braves. Uh, they were a team that tried to outslug you or try to slug with you. And in that ballpark and with their personnel, that was a really, really hard way to do it. Last year, the Marlins lost 41 run games, 40 because of the lack of a big hit. They went out and got Luis Arise. They got Segura, guys that know how to put the bat on the ball and put it in play. And look, Arise flirting with a 400 batting average gets on base. Their guys are uh, you know, getting big hits, getting singles, moving the line, getting two, three, four hits an inning, which in this game is tough to do. But they've now won 21 one-run games. So they've really dra- dramatically transformed things. But it all starts for me with pitching. We saw it in spades in that four-game series. And I can guarantee you this. They're going to be active at the deadline, and whoever gets them in the first round of the playoffs is going to have a real fight on their hands. Chip, how do you define this team? You had probably the worst loss of the season uh, when they lost that 10-9 game with Hicks airmail in the ball. And then I think one of the best games of the season yesterday where you see all facets of the game coming together. So how would you define this team going into the second half of the season? Now consistently inconsistent. I think that's the fairest way to put it. I think the concerns that folks had about pitching overall have been uh, shown to be well warranted. That the Cardinals just haven't pitched well enough consistently to win enough games. And by that I mean they're either giving up too many runs too early, which means your offense has to come back and try to win the game three or four times, uh, or you get the lead and haven't been able to hold it in the middle innings, which means you have to come back and try to win the game late against the opposing bullpen, or you have the lead late in the seventh, eighth, or ninth inning, and one of your three closers comes in and has a bad day. I mean, it's just been a a real toxic stew of inconsistency with just about everybody on the pitching staff, and that's that's really a tough way to win. And I said that on the broadcast the other night. Again, the, the heartbreaking nature of the Cardinals' loss two nights ago was not necessarily that Hicks airmailed the ball into right field. The fact they fell behind five nothing, came back tied it, took the lead. Marlins tied it. They they big home run from Walker with their last strike in their quiver. They take the lead and then a leadoff walk leads to all the chaos and, and the bad throw. That in, in a nutshell sums up to me the, the Cardinals season from a pitching standpoint. And I think that's something they've really got to address seriously if they want to uh, continue to have any hope whatsoever, faint as it might be, to, uh, to win the division. Chip, what did you think about Matthew Libertor getting sent down yesterday? Do you think we'll see him again this season? And what do you think changed for him or not exactly worked out for him during his time here again in the bigs? 
Yeah, I think it was time. Uh, I think uh, his first start was terrific, and everybody had a great deal of hope that, okay, maybe this young man's turned a corner. Uh, he hasn't. His inability to control his fastball is a problem. He hasn't been able to land his curveball consistently. His misses are bad misses, either in the middle of the plate or so far off the plate that uh, hitters aren't offering at it. Um, you know, he's got really, really good stuff, and I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that he'll be back. I think he's got a chance. You know, guys like him who throw 95 and 96 and have – that really good curveball, that's a nice combination to have at this level. But you got to throw it for strikes. And I don't think he's done that quite enough. And it happens quite a bit. Guys go back to the minor leagues and work on their stuff. There really isn't much for him to prove left at AAA. But it is a matter of repeating his mechanics. It's a, it is a matter of repeating his delivery. It is a matter of trusting his fastball and letting it eat, letting it rip, and not trying to be too fine and maybe giving too much respect to major league hitters. And that's something that young pitchers go through, and hopefully he'll get over it because he is going to be an important part of the Cardinals' rotation going forward, I hope. But he's got to be better than he was. With the way that this season has gone, do you expect to see more movement from uh, Memphis? Some guys coming up, Mason Wynn, Graceffo, McGreevy. Do you expect some of those guys to get some opportunities as well? I mean, look, I have a standard policy. I don't tell the GM how to run the team. And luckily, he doesn't <laughs> tell me what to say on TV. It's kind, of a good, uh, it's kind of a good thing. But, you know, look, the lifeblood of your organization is your farm system. And right now you have veteran players who are entrenched, and many of them are playing pretty well. So there just really isn't an opportunity for guys to, to get up here. But I think we've seen, at least in the last couple of days, if a change needs to be made, the Cardinals are not afraid to do it. They brought up Kyle Leahy. They brought up Herrera because of injury. They brought Dakota Hudson back. Uh, you know, there, there are options options down there um but you know how and when that takes place and how those conversations take place i think is going to be dictated by performance and ultimately it's good to have options if you need to make them chip carey joining us from chicago here on the opening drive on 101 espn chip from my perspective i i don't think i gave enough credence to the fact that jack flaherty had thrown had started only 32 games over three years whether it was injury or covid he just hasn't had the opportunity to pitch leading up to this first half and I get the sense that maybe he's rounding into form. You've seen every single start this year for Jack Flaherty. Are there? Th- what are you seeing from him that makes you think, if if you do believe it, that he's getting better and better and better? Well, you, I really think you need to get counseling, uh, Randy, because you and I are on the same wavelength. Um, <laughs> Uh, after the game last night, that's exactly what I asked Jack. I said, look, I didn't see you pitch much in 2019. I, I haven't seen you pitch much at all, quite frankly, in your major league career. Was tonight's game more similar to what you felt like in 2019? He said, I'm getting there. And I think he is now starting to feel like everything is working and everything is back uh, to the way that he was uh, you know, uh, dealing for the Cardinals over that three-month period. And that's a, certainly an encouraging sign. Uh, last night, he pitched really, really well. He commanded his fastball. He was economical uh, he's really been able to change speeds with all of his pitches so a guy that has four or five pitches can make that eight or ten that's really really tough for a major league hitter to try to cover and it all comes down to confidence and execution for him if he's got fastball command and he's not walking the ballpark uh he's got a really really good chance because he has plus plus stuff and, and what i thought was really good was late in the game when he needed a swing and a miss he was able to rear back and throw 95 miles an hour. He didn't try to do it the whole game, but when he needed it, he had it around the 100 pitch mark uh, in a stressful time in the ball game. So uh, that's something upon which to build for the Cardinals, and uh, hopefully Jack will continue to, to mow down the opposing hitters as we uh, look forward to a start after the All-Star break. Chip, we asked the hard-hitting questions here. Jack Flaherty, one word or two words? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought that was absolutely hilarious. I love Jim, and I think he's spectacular. He's so fun to listen to and so fun to watch. Yeah, well, I, I just had to give him another chance. You know, it was late in the game, you know, and he's, he's, he's now getting old like the rest of us. I just wanted to make sure he, he, he had a chance to redeem himself. Uh, <laughs> but he's got such a great sense of humor. That's what made he it is fun. fun. Okay, so you've told us before on off days you, you go to games. So what does Chip Carey do? during the all-star break yeah i'm gonna actually get to go home Uh, i haven't been home since uh spring training quite frankly and i'll get to go home and uh my wife has a list of honeydews as tall as i am and i'll be out in the yard cutting grass and trimming trees and pulling weeds but uh just a chance i think for all of us to to get away and refresh uh, mentally physically too you know this is a grind it's a hard job and uh for example we got into chicago last night at 2 30 this morning and we're going to play again today and a day game Saturday, Sunday. And I know fans don't understand that, but uh, the physical and mental toll 
for uh, everybody who's part of a traveling party is a big, big part of the game. So while we look forward to uh, every day that we play and every day representing the Cardinals, that's truly an honor, a chance to get away and just sort of take your mind off of the grind for a bit is a, a real refresher for all of us. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I'll, I'll pop back to St. Louis on Thursday and get set to uh, crank it up on Friday against the Nationals. Sounds great. Have a, a great time. Take advantage of that opportunity to decompress. We'll talk to you uh, next Friday morning, and then uh, we'll see you at the ballpark next weekend. Hey, I look forward to it, guys. Enjoy the All-Star break, and I appreciate you having me on. See you soon. Thanks, Chip. Take care. Chip Carey, TV voice of the Cardinals on Valley Sports, with us on 101 ESPN. So he's going to pull weeds during the All-Star break. I just did that this past weekend, and that was brutal. Yeah, it's not do fun. It though. It's got to be done. It's terrible. You see now as you start to get older, I'm starting to understand why my parents were just like, we're just going to stay home. Because once you start like <laughs> putting in all that time and investing that time and money and all that, you don't want to go anywhere else. Yeah. You're like, yeah. nope, I am going to just stick here. Yep. Yeah. Easier. Coming up, we've already established that the Cardinal offense is at best inconsistent. The defense, not very good. Uh, the pitching, well, the starting rotation leaves something to be desired and so does the bullpen. So, you're allowed to fix one element of the Cardinals. What is that element going to be? We're going to tell you what we think next on 101 ESPN. Hey, if you want a delicious lunch today, I want you to head over to the Fenton Bar and Grill on Rudder Road in Fenton. Man, I love the Fenton Bar and Grill. The people are wonderful. The servers are the best in the area. Alicia and Kelly and Colleen and uh, Megan will all be around, and they'll take care of you. The people there are great. They'll be talking sports, talking about that Cardinal victory last night and where the Cardinals are headed in the second half. And then the food is absolutely scrumptious. I really enjoyed uh, tangy Southwest salad, cheddar cheese, and flame-roasted corn with black beans and red and green peppers, diced tomatoes, and red onion. It is absolutely delicious. Add some grilled chicken to that for a little protein, and you'll have a magnificent salad. With this hot weather in St. Louis, nice cool salad for lunch at the Fenton Barn Grill is the way to go. And everything is scrumptious. If you want to go with a big, juicy cheeseburger with some tater tots on the side, can't go wrong with that either. Now, there's a little road construction going on around the Fenton Barn Grill. All you need to do is take the soccer park exit. Go from the soccer park. It's very easy to get to the Fenton Barn Grill. You'll love the people. You'll love the ambiance. You'll love the food. I like to stop there at least once a week, and I hope you will, too. It's the Fenton Bar and Grill. Find them on the web at FentonBarandGrill.com, and I'll see you there at the Fenton Bar and Grill.
This is Rocky with your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Cardinals yesterday with a 3 0 win over the Marlins as they stave off a sweep in Miami. They're back in action today. It's a 7 10 first pitch facing off against the Chicago White Sox. It'll be Jordan Montgomery, the lefty for the Cardinals, 6 and 7 on the season with a 3.28 ERA, facing off against Dylan Cease for the White Sox. Cease on the season, 3 and 3 with a 4.10 ERA. You want to hear all the interviews from today? You can go to the Dobbs Tyron Auto Center's podcast. We talked earlier with XFL Bat. Hawks coach Anthony Becht, Jay Delsing, former PGA pro, and Chip Carey, the voice of the St. Louis Cardinals. Again, check out all of those on 101ESPN.com later today. That is your Sports Center update driven by Johnny Londoff. Find your roads and shop 24 7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? All right, the Cardinals have been pretty universally bad this year. The starting rotation has really scuffled. The bullpen has left a lot to be desired with 19 or 18 blown saves. Uh, the, the, we mentioned the starting are rotation. You, are you speaking that into existence? <laughs> no, I mean, 19 blown saves? It's 18. Well, yeah, it's 18, but I'm we, saying, are you trying to predict a, the future? We've got a ways to go. Rage jinx the weekend. <laughs> if we end with just 19, I'll be a happy guy. All right. <laughs> how many? What, that, means, the, that means we only have one blown save the rest many, of the year. That's what I'm going to ask. Yeah. What's the what's the over under 25? Oh, it's way over. It's uh, way over. Yeah, but the offense hasn't been great. the The offense, in terms of runs scored, is below average in Major League Baseball. The defense is one of the worst in baseball. So, what do you guys want to fix first? I'm giving you one unit to fix. Starting pitching, bullpen, offense, defense, what are you going to fix? Brooke? I have to go with starting pitching, right? I mean, we've all seen this season. Starting pitching, starting pitching, starting pitching. And I I even looked this up because I'm just intrigued because we've seen this happen over and over again. We've been talking about it where starting pitching is supposed to set the tone of the entire game. And how absolutely deflating is it? And how many times have we seen it? It's probably too many to count where – all of a sudden the starting pitchers already like given up four runs Mm -hmm. and then your defense uh, I know that that's a part of it as well you then your offense what do you think their mindset is when you're going to the game and your starters already given up four runs to start the game here we go again here we go again so I just I wanted to look this up at uh starting pitching rankings and where the Cardinals are when it comes to how they perform ERA wise in the first inning uh where do you guys think that they are (laughs) I'd say last 29 Okay, they're tied with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Their ERA in the first inning, 6.52 ERA. The Reds are actually dead last, but they are tied with the Pirates 28th. Huh? Wow. Starting pitching Not ne- great. Problem. needs Problem. to change Not moving great. forward. And I don't know if it's just a philosophy that's going on with it or what what is going on surely the philosophy isn't giving up four runs in the first inning <laughs> consistently <laughs> no. but no. we're continuing to see it happen over and over again and that also begs the question of are these players and the pitchers being evaluated properly very legit question and, and brooke it's interesting because you're going with the starting pitching and while it is an issue I look at the defense making the pitching better. And I believe that the, the Cardinals defense this year, for whatever re- reasons, the the defense has caused a lot of the consternation and a lot of those runs that the starting rotation has allowed. Not to say that the starting rotation isn't to blame here, but this Cardinal team has given away 15 runs. They're a minus 15 in defensive runs saved. It's really interesting to look at the top of baseball with the Rangers and Brewers and Rays uh, with their great defenses. Uh, the, the Angels are better than they should be because of a really good defense. Then you look at the bottom, and the worst teams defensively are the A's, the White Sox, the Nationals, Royals, Phillies, and Cardinals. Defensive run saved is not an end-all defensively, but defense has really cost the Cardinals this year relative to what we expected at the beginning of the season with potentially three center fielders patrolling the outfield. Let's not even put Jordan Walker in that list. Just say, okay, we were going to have Newt Barr and Dylan Carlson, who were supposed to both be really good and Walker, but then an infield with 
Platinum Gold Glove winner, Platinum winner and Gold Glove winner, Arenado. DeYoung wasn't there at the beginning of the season, but Tommy Edmond won a Gold Glove last year. Brendan Donovan won a Gold Glove last year. Paul Goldschmidt has won multiple Gold Gloves. At least outside of catcher, you were supposed to have a really, really, really good defense, and this defense has been really, really, really bad. And to give you an idea of how things have changed, this year the Cardinals, as I mentioned, Minus 15 in defensive runs saved. And that ranking is in all of baseball. This is a National and American League. That's 24th. Uh, for last year, the Cardinals in defensive runs saved. Let me get to it quickly. Uh, they ranked at the top. Uh, they were uh, third in all of baseball. They saved 67 runs last year. They were third in baseball. This year, they're way down at the bottom with minus 15. So I'm blaming the defense and saying that that would be the thing I would want to fix most. I'm going to go with starting pitching as well. We've talked about it at nauseum, just how how poor it has been at times. Um, they are last in hits allowed. The second the, the second to last is they're 50 more. They've allowed 50 more hits than the team that mm -hmm. is second to last. That's too many. And then here's the here's a an important and intriguing stat. The starting pitching is second in home runs allowed. They're mm, tied for yeah. second in home runs allowed, which means they're not getting beat by bombs. They're getting beat a death by a thousand paper cuts. They are just allowing hits, allowing runs. You talked about the first inning being, we talked about a couple of weeks ago, just, oh, you just see it over eliminating over the first inning. Yeah. Don't even count it. Just move on to the second inning. It's It's been, if you start off poorly, going to be hard to dig yourself out of the hole, and they've done it. Time and time again, we talked to Chip a few minutes ago about that, that game a couple of days ago. The frustrating part is you were down five to nothing early. You, you dig yourself into a hole, you climb out of it, and then you get back into that hole and you lose the game. The starting pitching has to be better. Jack Flaherty yesterday was a prime example of what you need from these starting pitchers. If you get that, if you've had that, you'd have a much more successful season than where they are right now. 100%. And somebody texted in, and it is interesting that the Reds, starting pitching has not been good this season, but they have been successful. Somebody texted in for the 314. If the Reds are dead last in starting pitching, but in first in first place, why do we need to fix starting pitching? We ain't the Reds. Let's try that. Yeah. I we we have I mean we have more issues, yeah. <laughs> obviously. Let me tell you, you don't want to be have the worst starting pitching. No. It's hard to win a World Series. It is. With, it's you, catch you, up you what did you see from the teams last season that made a deep run? Pitching. Yeah. Great the starting pitching. Had really good you pitching. You need to. And the Reds have been very interesting this year, but starting pitching is definitely something that they will have to address at the trade deadline to push forward. I want to fix the starting pitching, but Rock won't let me trade people. <laughs> He's holding you back. He's holding me hostage. I'm hey, stopping you, you from trading two people. Two, two, two. You can't many. figure out any other trades? No. You can't figure out any other trades with all the pitchers and, and, and infielders it, you have and uh, outfielders. I, that doesn't mean people I didn't say want you couldn't trade Goldschmidt. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think he. I don't think they should do that. I did say that it would be bring you the most in return, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting that we can have this conversation. And the offense has been as inconsistent as it has been, but it's yeah. kind of the least of their problems. <laughs> <laughs> it right? is. It, well, it just seems like the pitching staff in general yeah. is something that needs to be addressed. This is not good enough moving forward. Do you feel comfortable? Just say that nothing changed. Do you feel comfortable with this pitching staff moving forward? No, no. No, they need to turn over a lot of guys on this pitching staff. And do you even do you even point to when they had that long stretch of games? And I, I understand that you have another starter with Matthew Libertori. It was six guys, six pitchers mm -hmm. at that point. But you also stretch your bullpen thin. Do you think that that's had an effect? Yeah, absolutely it has. Right. And, and you know what I also think, and I don't know Dusty Blake from Adam, but their preparation, when you have that bad ERA in the first inning, yes, your preparation, when you are in July and you're telling a starting pitcher or allowing a starting pitcher to start calling his own game in July, I think that's an issue. I don't think that the long-term preparation or the short-term preparation of these pitchers is up to what it should be. No. Lisa texts in and says the culture needs to be fixed. She, she consistently says that they are mentally soft. And I... I <laughs> To a degree, I will agree with that because the, the incident we talked about yesterday where Jack Flaherty walked, um, was it Dela Cruz? And Dela Cruz kind of screamed and shouted towards Jack. If you watch that play, 
the entire Marlins team is coming out, out of the dugout onto the field. The, ba- the runner at third base is running down the line. There was not one Cardinal moving. Wilson Contreras is the only one that was standing there jawing back and forth. That, to me, is a troubling thing. Yeah. That, yes. I mean, you got to have a few guys on your team that are willing to punch somebody in the face. Not saying you should. Stand, or stand punch. up for each other. You shouldn't. You don't have to go around punching people in the face. But you should have a few guys that, if it gets hairy, they, need, they might need a barroom brawl. Get into yeah. a, not with each other. With some other Why people. not? Yeah. At this point, why not? It would just add to the story <laughs> of this season, right? It reminds me of, remember the, the Blues before they won on their run? Robert Bortuzzo and Zach Sanford got in a brawl at a practice. And yeah, it worked was, out it well for things. It changed things. <laughs> it changed the culture. Sometimes you got to have those things happen. Sometimes you need some sort of brawl. I I don't know. It's You you think about the pitching philosophy, and I, I would never want to see somebody lose their job, But and I don't know what Dusty Blake is doing specifically with them. We know that Adam Wainwright has mentioned that he is kind of a numbers guy, and even he was hesitant with that at first, but sometimes it's good to bring in those analytics and balance that out. You just do wonder if this was the right move this season in bringing him in. Open to question. It's it's a fair thing to wonder, 100%. That's Brooke. That's Carrie. I'm Randy. Coming up, we're going to head down the stretch with a little edition of Rock and Roll here on 101 ESPN. Hey, it's Carrie, and if you're dealing with pain, I've got some great news for you. My friend, Dr. Sheen, can help you. You know, the older we get, the more pain our bodies feel. Sometimes it's from sleeping. Sometimes it's walking, running. Whether it's our knees, ankles, hips, shoulders, Dr. Sheen can help you. He taught me about PBM. PBM is light therapy that helps you heal. The light stimulates cells in the damaged area, and it allows your body to heal itself faster. It decreases the inflammation and helps eliminate pain. Even after my first treatment of my elbow, it started feeling great started getting my knees worked on i'm doing workouts that i was unable to do prior to starting pbm my physical therapist told me that he noticed much less inflammation than i had had in the past and obviously it's because of this pbm therapy which is helping me heal if you want to feel better if you want to feel like you did 10 15 years ago you need to see dr sheen give him a call or check him out online at thesbi.com that's thesbi.com and tell him carrie sent you
All right, it's time for rock and roll. Matthew, what do you got for us? Well, if you guys uh, were checking your email, you'd know that today is National Hot Dog Day, and that uh, for the lucky people around today? the station today, we're going to get, yeah. Was it yesterday? Did I miss it? No, I, I saw the email. I didn't know it was this early. Yeah, it was national, apparently this is National Hot Dog Day, and apparently we're going to be getting some hot dogs uh, here at the station a little bit later today. Um, what time? I think they're saying they're coming in around noon. All the good stuff happens after 10. Well, yeah. people, people we, we get up a lot earlier than most people. Mm-hmm. No. Just saying. Wouldn't mind. It's July 19th. 19th. July 19th. Oh, okay. is I, I, saw, I saw an email. They were just getting us ready for Did National Hot Dog Day. Sorry about that. Us? No, I, I saw an email. for. I thought it was for today. They, usually they say, hey, we're, <laughs> we're getting food. It's the next day. And, and, the, and the team was in Chicago, so I was going to I was gonna get your guys' thoughts because this isn't a hill to die on. It could have been, though. I, uh, oh, my. I'm not a big fan of Chicago-style hot dogs, and I'm already getting a look from Brooke. You can see it on the cameras that she's incredulous about this one. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think it's terrible. I think you're, you're adding way too much much stuff and i don't know but on the on the eve of what i thought was national hot dog day apparently it's not till the 19th i just wanted to get your guys thoughts teams up in chicago would you be mashing down on a classic chicago hot dog oh, if you were up there a hundred percent they're delicious the first time remember when sonic debuted them nope <laughs> on on their that's, menu that's and that was the first time i ever and i was young I, you it was the first food. time i ever oh my i love i love fast food <laughs> not as much anymore but uh because i'm trying to lose weight but I just remember when Sonic, when I was younger, they got the Chicago dog. And I'm like, what is this? Oh, my God. It's delicious. I know that you're not supposed to put ketchup on there, but I do do that. I, is that Nothing wrong with that. Is that sacrilegious? Uh, no. <laughs> ketchup. I Nothing wrong with that. You can put pickle relish and sauerkraut and all of that. Load it up. All of it. It's it's wonderful. It's delightful, Rock. I know you. What about the poppy seed bun? That's, that's all good. of it. I hate yeah. it so much. Every part of what? it. I hate it so much. So what? What is your ideal hot dog? Uh, I'm Just gl- the I'm bun glad- and the dog. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm cold. I, I, I have a, not even warm. I have a slight edit to one of my favorite <laughs> media. I have a slight edit to one of my media uh, favorite media personalities. Favorite hot dogs. Okay. Here was about ten years ago. Uh, a man I love, John Stewart, talked about his thoughts on Chicago hot dogs, and he. He hit all the points, in my opinion. You don't put tomatoes and celery sauce on hot dogs either. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knows there's three acceptable condiments for a hot dog. There's mustard, onions, and stagnant cart water. That's it. That's obviously oh, from a New York guy. And I'm going to say this right now. He's, he's got two of the three. Mustard, ketchup, onions. Get everything else away from me. You, first of you all. You don't like any fancy dogs? Like, sometimes there's places, like, that kind of dress them up, do different types of buns, all that. I, I like a fancy not, dog. Uh, Poppy seed bun's just wrong. You need to experience the don't life-changing experience that is Woofies. Oh, Woofies. And get the Big Daddy. And... Get, big daddy. get living. It's over in Overland. Overland. Uh, yeah, uh, I was pointing north, and I was yeah, like, near, north near 170 and and Page. And uh, yeah, you need to uh, you need to change your life. Get there to Woofies go. and uh, have I, one of their classic t- hot dogs. I'm gonna get a text from my mom saying Randy Carricker's right. I don't know how I failed you so much because my mom always talked about how great Woofies were. Woofies. I'm pretty sure I got taken there when I was when I was a kid. Yeah, so there's what's, place what's up, on that hot what? dog? Uh, so, uh, well, please don't I mean, tell me chopped tomatoes or peppers. Mm, like that's my thing about yeah, Chicago. Yeah. It's like it's like huge chunks of stuff. Just, it's like chopped. It's, it's like you do. Half a cut of a tomato, and you just yep. you you enjoy. You don't have to. You you're a thinker, Rock. You 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 put too much yeah, thought God into forbid. some things. Not I mean some things you should think about. <laughs> some things you should just live and just do. You know you don't have to. Overthink just everything. vibe, just, you know? Just the hot dog is given to you. It's on a plate or, or on a napkin, however you, you consume, and just enjoy it. Okay, I wouldn't have this strong of opinion about Chicago hot dogs oh if people from gosh. Chicago hadn't been shoving their hot dog no. like <laughs> propaganda down my throat this entire time with their ketchup hatred and their weird buns yeah. and their tomato chunks and such like such like that. I'm just saying, I'm only Chicago, responding you, in you kind. Can, you can only take so much from Chicago people. Yeah, you, know, you love them, but listen, I got there's an entire minute rant that, that Stewart does on deep dish pizza. I didn't add it in here because we've all been over that one thousands yeah. of times. Michelle, the small Zemo is to, amazing. Used to run, used to run through this on these hours about how odd Chicago Deep Dish was. I didn't want to take it there. I just wanted to talk hot dogs. Randy, I, you seem like you are a fan of the Chicago hot dog. Oh, I'm a huge fan of the Chicago hot dog. Yeah, because I'm, well, I, I have a palate <laughs> that is sophisticated. Wow, well, it's, it, it's, it's a good turn now. You're going to say you love freedom. Like, no. like, adult, like an adult? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, come on now. What happened? What's what's going on here? Uh, no, like, nothing wrong with a little pickle relish. Fine, Carrie. I'll give you right, that one. I feel like, like two times, times, chunks away from a hot dog. Times. Your your right, taste fine. buds are, you know, fine. I don't want to say toddler like, but how would you- <laughs> do you like chicken nuggets? 
Who doesn't like chicken nuggets? <laughs> there you go. That's Sir, let me give you, I, I don't give only you, I, like chicken nuggets, but I like chicken nuggets. I'll give you, I mean, a, I'll give you a quick I'll story because, you you know, some people. So we were at the ring ceremony. My grandmother reminds me of this all the time when we won our Super Bowl. My daughter was there. Santonio, uh, Santonio was sitting next to me. Sitting at, We were sitting at the same table. And my daughter had chicken nuggets for her meal. He mm-hmm. had a steak. And he's like, hey, you want to trade? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. My daughter's like, yeah, yeah, you take the chicken nuggets out. He, he wanted, he, he enjoyed, he didn't want a steak. He wanted the chicken nuggets. No, anytime somebody criticizes me for eating chicken nuggets, I'm be like, hey, a Super Bowl I'm champion. a toe tapping in a Super Bowl game after MVP. these ones. Thank you very much. There you go. Can you, can you have your mom text in and, like, say, like, how picky of an eater you were when you were a oh, child? How oh, was I was that? a super picky how eater How many meals did she have to make? Like, was it, was it multiple meals being made? Mac because and cheese no, and chicken no, 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 no. My, my, my mom wasn't one meal. No, no, my mom's old you, school. You eat or starve? Mm-hmm. Eat or okay. starve? Oh, yeah, that was my family. No, I respect My mom wasn't going to change the chicken she made. It was... You either eat the chicken she made or what's up. <laughs> Speaking of somebody who's never seems to be happy, uh, do you guys see that Corey Dillon is mad at these Cincinnati Bengals for not putting yeah. him in the ring of honor? Beautiful. In fairness to Corey Dillon, the the criteria to get in the Bengals' um, ring of honor, the votes that go into it are the sweet and season ticket holders for the stadium, which I do think is, I do think he has a point. That's a really odd way to do your ring of honor, but at the same time, you're a guy who also went out on a really bad note when you left the Bengals. He's still their career leader by a long shot in career carries and career yardage. Should Corey Dillon be a ring of honor for the Cincinnati Bengals franchise? I mean... This is not like who 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 Anthony Munoz. Mm-hmm. Um, they just started in 2021. Okay, who's in it? Uh, I can pull up that. Ken Anderson, Munoz, Willie Ken Anderson, Anderson, Ken Riley. Willie. Okay, and there was uh, one other. Is uh, it Anderson, Willie uh, the Anderson. kicker. No, 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 no. The uh, um, there should be Willie Anderson too. Yeah, Willie Anderson. Yeah, I think there were right. six, right? Willie Anderson, Munoz, uh, Ken Riley, Kenny Anderson, somebody else, Isaac Curtis, hmm. 85. So I mean, that's that's I mean, best left tackle, best defensive back. I mean, they're, if they're, he's they're, your best running back. He, I mean, he is far away still the leader in carries and yards for the, for them. He did leave again in a huff. He got traded away for a second round pick from the Patriots. He had a little bit of an issue with a, a domestic violence case right before, like two years before he left. Didn't he rip the franchise is, too? And he, I mean, he totally ripped the franchise yes. on his way out. Absolutely tore them apart on his way out. He says though that his departure and his time in New England shouldn't um, shouldn't oh. take away from what he did in Cincinnati. And he's calling his omission "quote unquote" damn near criminal. You all left Boomer side. And not in it. I don't. Know. If he's not, then then hell no, Corey yeah. Dillon. I don't be. think Boomer was yet. Yeah, yeah. but they've only had it for two years. Well, yeah, Boomer got to get in before him. Yeah. Well, what are we talking about? That's a, actually well, a great point. Pete Johnson, league number forty-eight running back. Who uh, else in their history? Joe Burrow. <laughs> Joe, he'll be. He, 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 now, man, put him up there while he's still playing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like Chris, right. Collins, Chris Collinsworth. Yeah. What mean, about Chad Johnson? Yeah, and Collins, yeah, Collins before was, before Corey Dillon. I mean, like you got some names that are going to go in. Collinsworth was your like, leading receiver on the Super Bowl on the Super, Super Bowl team. Yeah, so yeah, yeah Collinsworth has got to go in there. Boomer is is definitely got to go in before he won the yep. MVP. Yep. What are we talking about? Good. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> you know what? I'm glad we got to shut down Corey Dillon yeah. here at the end of the show. Thank you, Randy. Yeah. By the way, if you have any complaints about the show, uh, the number for <laughs> 101 ESPN three one four ninety three. What? Six thousand. Three one four nine eight three six thousand. You need to call management and talk to them. Mm. Also, like, yes. there's always that person there's that likes to. There's three always. One four. I called your boss. Okay. Well, okay. Good. That's, that's beautiful. It. Yeah. Also, I didn't realize that putting ketchup on hot dogs would anger oh people. God, no. Oh, it's polarizing. Oh, I, I said and didn't Are even check serious? because I, people. Then why do they have the ketchup and mustard it, always it by the hot dog it's stands? A, it's a weird. People with a reasonable palate. There you go. It is a weird, it's just like a weird little thing. Extra sauce. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, to it. Got, a of, got a bunch of people are saying you gotta go. You gotta go to Portillo's because you never tried it before. Of course, I've been to Portillo's and tried it. Get out of here! I'm not just gonna bash something I've never tried. Mm, that's good. That's good. I, I'm just saying I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great job by our producer, audio engineer Matthew Rocchio. Thank you, sir. Yeah, pleasure. Uh, Brooke, have a wonderful weekend. Is, is this like yes. Brooke Palooza? Are you going to continue the birthday for the whole uh, weekend? It is Brooke Palooza. The parents are in town. Irma and Steve. They're probably listening Hello. this morning. Good. And so we went to dinner last night. We're going to hang out, hang out with my future in-laws, and just Very nice. have like a fun, chill weekend. Love it.
Good. Have a great time. Yes. No pulling weeds in the yard. Uh, That's what, the whole reason we did that is so that my parents weren't disappointed in our yard management. <laughs> That's what David and I have never done this much yard work as we did because we did not want our, my parents to be embarrassed by like how our yard is maintained. Uh, CD, have a fun weekend. I pulled bears. Indeed. And we thank you for tuning in, texting in, and being a part of the show for all of us until Monday morning at 7. Have a great weekend, St. Louis. That's right.